thank you. Spirit right? Am I doing the right thing? Do I have the right attitude about life? You know what I'm saying? You know, I, 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 my, I, is, is it on? Amen. It's on. Okay. Is it on the camera? Okay. All right. I'm so sorry. Amen. Those of you in the live stream, we want to welcome you, amen, uh, today, amen, to our Saturday Sabbath worship and deliver service, amen. Those of you in your live stream pastors on the air and my live stream family, we just love you so much. And those of you that want to go higher, the Bible said, you know, we'll know the truth and the truth will make us free. And the Bible said that there's higher heights. You know, Paul said, he said, I forget those things which are behind and I press forward toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus. So there's a higher calling. And so one of the things we have to do is what church folk have done, they get saved, sanctified, get saved and satisfied. They get saved and satisfied. Now that's one of the most dangerous things that you could do because the Bible said be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring, is as a roaring lion walking about now seeking whom he may devour. How in the world do you catch somebody walking? Because the person that was once walking, done, that running, doesn't stop. And so you don't want to get to the point where you get saved and satisfied. Woe be unto them that it eased in Zion. You understand? You have to follow on to know the Lord. For as many as are led by the Spirit, we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We got to take it to another level. You got to keep moving. You got to keep going because, you, you see, if it ain't the devil catch you, your flesh will come back and catch you. You see what I'm saying? Your flesh will come back and catch you, and you'll find yourself getting in a carnal realm, and what used to be your delight will become your offense. The very thing that you used to delight in, now you're offended by. You understand? Now you've got an attitude about it because you understand now it's, it's hitting you or it's affecting you. So flesh is evil, so it, it sees things the wrong way. It's going to see things in the evil eye, where like somebody picking on me, somebody throwing off on me, somebody, you know what I mean? But it's not that way. You got the, your flesh and the devil, so you have to keep both of them. You have to stay in front of both of them. You have to keep your flesh up under, and you have to keep the devil behind you. In order to be able to keep going, you have to keep going further in God. You know, we grow in grace. Now, the, the Bible said that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, if you get in the word, you can get in the spirit. If you get in the spirit, you can get in the heavenlies. And if you get in the heavenlies, you can keep the devil where he belongs. But the average one of us gets in, get in the word, get, get, get satisfied, get a little knowledge, and we feel like we've gotten there, we've arrived. But you cannot. You have to co continue to go on. You have to continue to follow on. You have to continue to go further into God. Because there's a realm in God that the wicked one touches us not. You understand what I mean? There's a place that we can get in God that of total protection. Now watch the wisdom of the word of God. Get wisdom in all thy getting. Get a what? Understanding. I was just reading to them out of the book of Deuteronomy, of Genesis chapter 48, uh, 49 verse 8, when I was talking about how uh, the, the, the lawgiver shall not depart from Judah. I mean, the scepter shall not depart, which is the ruling rod of a king, shall not depart from Judah, neither a lawgiver from between his feet, representing that, uh, that, that, that a lawgiver shall not depart from his loins, right? In other words, now, but, it, but, 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 but the lawgivers were not Judites. The lawgivers was Levites. But this is a prophetic word that the, that, the, that the lawgiver will be from out of the tribe of Judah, changing the priestly order. It's, gonna, it's, a, new, it's a new order, all right? So they're talking about this lawgiver, right? Shall not depart out of Judah. But if you read on, it'll explain he's coming meek and lowly on the coat of an ass. He's talking about Jesus. Well, then we went to the book of uh, St. John chapter 1 and verse 14 where the Bible said, For the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And then the Bible said of his fullness that we all receive grace for grace. And John came to that witness. John uh, uh, came. Let me read it to you again. And the Bible said, John bear witness him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is deferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all, have all we received, grace for grace. Now, that 17th verse is going to bring clarity. That 17th verse is going to bring clarity. The Bible said, for the law was given by Moses. Now, please pay attention. Those of you in the live stream, those of you that are sitting here today, I mean, I want you to watch this because 
we're in an hour. God give me a message for tomorrow, and it's going to really be a blessing. But we're in an hour that you have to be really, really careful. We're not only fighting demons. We're fighting, we're fighting Christ, uh, social Christianity. You know, we're not just fighting demons. And so what's happening is, is people are buckling because it's enough to receive pressure from the devil. And then there's another thing to have pressure from the church world. And see, if you're not careful, you're throwing, you're throwing the towel and say, don't take all that. You, you understand? You get to a point where, like, I, I, you know, we, we ain't got to do this. And you just start relaxing. But the moment you relax, one of the things about Satan, he's smart enough not to take you out of the building. He's smart enough not to take you out of the building. He's smart enough not to take your title, not to take your position. Smart enough. But he can keep you in the building with your title, with your position, and take your relationship. See, the relationship is where the power is. The relationship is in the oneness. The re relationship is in the oneness. That's where the power, that's where the protection is, is in the oneness. So I can forever come to church and never come to the oneness. You understand what I mean? I, I can come to church, but if I don't come to the oneness, if I don't come in relationship with God, then, then, then he, he's got me. If I can come to church mean, if I can come to church bitter, and I can come to church with a chip on my shirt, I can come to church with all kinds of nasty attitudes, right? Then he's got me. He's got me. So if we become one with him, they that do know that God shall be what? Now, how in the world are you going be, to be, be strong? Because the no is the, is, the, is the intercourse. The no is the oneness. When a man joins himself unto a harlot, they too shall become what? Even so, they that join themselves unto the Lord shall become one what? One spirit. You got what I'm saying? Becomes one spirit, right? So if you become one spirit, he was a man that did no sin, neither was the guy found in his mouth. He did always the things that pleased the Father. You understand the Bible said he humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross, right? So he was humble. He was, he was, he was, he was always, the only way he could please the Father, he had to walk in such a realm of faith where faith works by love. He had to have this love. And so when we become one with him, we take on that relationship. You understand? We get stronger. We, the Bible said he didn't fail, neither was he discouraged. We fail him. We get discouraged. We weak. And people don't know the weakness. See, if the devil can pull you away from that word, right, if he can start dissecting that word, more of the word he dissects, the weaker you become. Because it's, if in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, you understand? If in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God, every time I take a piece of the word, I take a piece of God. You see what I'm saying? And so people think they're smart by taking this don't mean that, that don't mean that. All you're doing is weakening. And so when the enemy come in, the Bible says, if I faint in the day of adversity, it's because my what is small? My strength is small. My, my strength is small, right? Well, my strength is predicated on my, on my know, on my relationship. You know, the more I know, the stronger I become. The more I become one with him, the stronger I become. Well, the, I, here, I didn't come into a realm with God. I was walking in a realm of strength. I, I was walking in a realm of, uh, and God was moving from now all of a sudden now. I think they... Uh, let's see. Mike could get it. Uh, you know, all of, I'm walking in a realm. I'm walking in a realm with God. I'm walking in a realm with God. And, uh, you know, now, now all of a sudden now I'm so weak. Now I can't take nobody rolling their eyes at me. I can't take nobody talking about me. I can't take nobody lying on me. But there was a realm you walked in with God that that stuff didn't bother you. Didn't, you understand what I mean? There's certain things that can hit you like it, 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 as a man, certain things some people can say, it, it, it jokes me because that like, God, from that, from that person. But at the end of the day, if you got that word in you, then what happens is you realize that now I'm dead and my life is here with Christ and God, then there's no way that they could have did that or that could have happened to me without God. You understand? And if he moves, if he's moving the pieces and He's working both the will and the to-do according to his good pleasure. You know, uh, the, the, the goings of a man are of the Lord. How then can he understand his own ways? You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, how, the, how then can he, can he understand his own ways? Are y'all listening to me? You know, now you have to pay attention. How then can, excuse me, those of you in the live stream, shoot, sorry for the interruptions, but how then can he understand his own ways? You know, the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. The preparation of the heart and the hands of the tongue and man is from the Lord. So 
<coughs> this knowledge, and this when God revealed this knowledge to me, like this day, like 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 brother brother Mario said, how brother Mario was saying uh, the other day, he was saying how the Sabbath is such a beautiful, blessed day, right? It's such a beautiful day, but the thing of it is, you can go through so many trials. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sunday, 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 Monday. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Y'all listening to me? Pay attention. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now, some of your trials can hit you so hard to make you forget who God is. It'll make you forget who God is. It'll make you forget. This, that, now, you have to listen to me because that's why you have to stay in the word of God. And this, like people say, but I don't see how Bob McCoy do it. I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to show you. <coughs> I'm going to show you how to walk. I, 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 I'm, I'm human. Stuff people do, that stuff hurts. I can tell you I don't cry. I don't tell you, but I don't cry long. I don't, I don't allow that stuff to get to me to, to stop my, my forward progress. See, what happens, if you respond to it, then it's got you. See, there's one thing for it to hit you, and maybe you, you shed a, a, a few tears. You got what I'm saying? It, it's one thing for something to hit you, and it, and it hurts you for a moment, right? But when you respond to it, then you become a recipient. And see, that's, that's, it's not what people do to you. It's the response that you, you, you give from what they do. If you retaliate, then you get in the mix of it, right? So that's where Satan gets it. It ain't what people do to you. It's, it's, it's your response to what they do. You know, for every action, there's a reaction, right? So if I can get you to talk because they talking, I got you. See? So I tell you all the time, and I'm, but of course not, 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 not inhuman. So there's things that, there's stuff that I've gone through that's been painful, right? It's been hurtful. But I can't engage in that because if I engage, see, that's what the devil want me to do. He want me to stop thinking about this and go to thinking about that. Let God be true and every man be a what? Those are lies. That, that's, that's negativism, right? So if I get caught up into that, then I can't go forward in God. Y'all listening to me? I, I, can't go further, I can't go further in God. I can't go to the next level in God. So, and that, that's what I'm saying. That there's things that's going to happen to you, right? You know, stuff can happen to you in your home, happen to you in your marriage. So your, your response to it, your response to it, your response to it can affect you, right? You know, maybe the wife can do something. Maybe the husband can do something, right? But then you have to understand that, that Eve was not a mismatch. She was on purpose. She was a help me. You understand what I'm saying? So she was an assistant to help Adam get to God, right? But her mistake is what made him a man. <laughs> you, you understand what I mean? So the stuff that she sent him through is what made him become the man. And I tell people all the time, in marriage, in marriage, one of the things in marriage is a sad thing because the average person getting married, they're in marriage just a few weeks or a few, a few year, a, a year or so, and they get discouraged and they just want to bail out, right? And I'm just through with this. I'm going to throw this. No, you're, you're being made. It takes a real man to stay in the midst. It takes a real woman to stay in there because it's going to teach you about about life, that life is not selfish. Life is consideration. Life is give. Life is take. You understand? You know, the life is, is sweet. Life is bitter. Life is, is, life is day. Life is night. So what, what marriage will teach you is it's going to balance your life out. You see? And it take a real man to endure. It take a real woman to endure. All, and now, don't get me wrong. There's some marriages you have to bail out because they're not, they're not to teach you. They can be there to kill you. And that's why it's so important to hear the voice of God in a marriage. You can't just jump in it. You understand? You really, really need to be led by the Spirit because that, ca that can be detrimental. It can really cause your, cause your soul to be lost. You understand? I was telling somebody earlier this morning on my way to church, I said, you have to make certain decisions. I said, now, sometimes we make the, make, they, they made a mistake in, in uh Marrying, they married outside of the faith, right? But so it's been nothing but trouble ever since because they're unequally yoked, right? But I, like I was telling them, I said, what you have to do, you're going to have to be careful to keep your relationship with God. And I said, now, your relationship by you being a monarch, you got grown children, you got, you know, some of them grown, some of them younger. I said, but you don't realize, I don't care if your children become 
75 years old and you're still the mother, you're still the monarch, they're going to always still call you. If they need prayer, they're going to call you. If, they, if, if, if anything go down, you know, they, they, your relationship with God is their bridge. Woman, don't pray. Women, don't, uh, 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 don't pray for me, but pray for yourself, your daughters of Jerusalem, and for your wife. You know, you're the connection to your children. You're the monarch. And I said, whatever happens to you, it's not individual. See, you so busy trying to save one soul. You know, you're trying to save a soul and losing many souls. See, you're trying to save a relationship, but you're losing many relationships behind trying to save it. And that's where you have to get. When, and th see, this is one of the things people don't like about Bob McCoy is I've learned how to make decisions, and I've learned how to make decis decisions on equation. All right? You got what you call collateral damage. And I tell people this all the time. Sometimes one must die that others may live. You got what I'm saying? Sometimes the relationship, like, like, like sometimes people, they, they may think like, well, Bubba Core don't like this, Bubba Core don't like that. It's not that I don't like certain things or that I don't go along with certain things. It's that when you do something, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to be precise. You see, as a leader, as a leader, now whatever you do outside the realm, and you say, you say you're not a part of the church, that's your own, your own. But when you get in a church, you become unified. And this is why your decisions cannot be selfish. I don't think about it, but I got to live this life. I got to do it like this. You can't live like that. The moment you get saved, your life don't even belong to you no more. Do you not know y'all don't want, y'all really won't let me live for myself? Do you not know that y'all would not, if I wanted to just live a regular, normal life, you wouldn't let me live it? And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, and, and I'm, I'm well aware that I can't live my life and be your leader. I have to live certain ways for you. For you. I have to be certain examples for you. There's certain things that I have to eliminate in my life for you. As a mother, there's certain things that you can't do because as is the mother, so is the daughter. As is the father, so is the son. So you, you can't live for you. So when you make a decision, then, then the decision has got to be based on the corporate. And so sometimes by McCoy, sometimes like if you get ready to do something, I say, okay, watch this. Do it like this. And, and the reason for it, to do it like this, is because if you make one mistake, it don't affect you. It affects the body. It affects the body. And, and one of the sad things about this is at the end of the day, Brother McCoy gets blamed for everything. So, 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 so by me getting the blame for everything, then I need to make decisions for what goes on. I was telling one of my, one of my, one of my loved ones, I was telling him, I said, now, I don't go by your house. I don't be in your business. I don't call you and dictate to you about what to do. I said, but when you step up in my church, automatically you're on my turf. And then I'm responsible for everything as a shepherd, as a seer, as a seer. Y'all listening to me? I, I'm responsible as a shepherd for, for, the, for the church. You got what I'm talking about? So whatever goes on in the church is my business. So if you do something in the church, you know, you can't say you're in my business. No, you're in my business. Now, if you don't want me in your business, stay away from my business. And I don't, I say, I don't be over your house. I don't be in your business. I don't tell you how to run nothing. But when you step up in the church, I am responsible. I'm responsible. Not for you. I'm responsible for every individual in here. So if you make a mistake that affects everybody in here, then God will hold me accountable. So if I have to make a, mis a, a, a decision to exclude you, so be it. Almost six hundred million people in America. Here's a country who wants to take our peace, take our liberty, take our democracy, right? And so we know they're threatening us. So what we do, we take our armed forces, we go over there and we conquer them. But if in the midst of conquering them for our freedom, for our democracy, we lose five thousand soldiers. We lose. Now you got to listen, now you got to be smart. Because if you're not smart, you'll think like a child. And a child thinks really, really, really immature. 
You have to start thinking more on, the, on, the, on Paul said when I was a child, I thought a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, a mature, then I put away childish things, right? So now it's time to really, really start growing up. It's time to stop. It's time to like not be in church for 10, 15, 20 years and still be a child. It's time to start thinking on a mature level. You got what I'm talking about? You see what I mean? And so, see, so, so you got 5,000 soldiers that were, that were killed in the process of trying to keep our freedom and keep our democracy. But if you take the equation, this is what I'm talking about, making a, a, a decision by equation. If you take equation and you take six mil, 600 million people and 5,000 soldiers, tell me how that equates. Tell me how that equates. That doesn't even equate. That's nothing compared to the lives that are saved. So I'm willing to lose 5,000 men to save 600 million people. So, see, Brother McCoy, the way he make a decision, and you don't understand it because you you on the you on the outside looking in, I'll kill one to save them all. It's a law that one must die, that others may live. And so that's one of the things of a leader, of a leader, and it's, it's very very misunderstood, very misunderstood. And in your life, many of you right now setting up listening to me live straight. <laughs> Your life cannot go forward because you're so busy trying to save one, but it, you're losing everything. You're losing your family. You're losing your home. You're losing your marriage. You're losing your health. Trying to save one thing. And sometimes that one thing you're trying to save is not savable. You have to learn, make, a, make, a, make an, equ an equation decision. You have to make an equation. Is, 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 is this worth me holding on to versus this? And that's what we can't do. We, go, we, go, we come up in life, and we don't know how to make an equation decision. We don't know how to let that one thing go. And then we end up losing everything we have. You lose your family. You lose your relationship with God, you know, trying to hold on to one thing instead of making that decision. Instead of making that decision. There's some people that's not designed to go with you the rest of the way. There's some people not designed to go with you, period. And I don't care, I don't care, I don't care if, 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 if you they baby's mama or you they baby's daddy or you they ex this or you they ex that. <laughs> There's some people you have, to, you have to make decisions. I can't go back into that. You know what I'm saying? In order for your life to go forward, just say, just say if it is your baby's daddy, you know, or it is your baby's mama. If that person ain't on the level where you're going, you understand what I mean? You have to make you have to make an equation decision that I got to le I have to be willing to leave the mama and the baby for right now, if so be. To go do what I need to do to be, be the man that I really can be later on. But if I stay there, I'll be nothing. And that's what happens in, 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 in people that can't really make rightful decisions. A leader has to make those decisions. I, I, it don't bother me if I if I if it ain't but three folk in the church. My church <coughs> is not based on economy. My church is not based on membership. My church is based on faith in God. I move by faith. I move by faith, by prayer and the word of God. I believe God. When God speaks to me and he tells me what to do, then I trust him. That he's going to work this stuff out. You understand what I mean? He said, cast all your cares upon me for I what? In other words, give me all your worries. Give me all your distractions. Let me have all of them and don't worry about nothing. If God speaks to me and he says, okay, I want you to go get that church. He knows what that church entails. Then I put it on you. You know, what, you know, what, you know what's going to be required for that? Well, you know I'm not going to compromise. You know I'm not going to take down. You know I'm not going to back up. You know I'm not going to start veering to the left because we're going into a, a, a new facility. So then you know to put me in a position to where I'm not going to compromise. So I'm not even going to worry about it. I know you already got that thing sold up. And the wisdom that God gives me to do certain things, you know, he's he going to take care of that. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to move. See, folk just moving now. Me, let me tell you what. Can I, can I, can I tell you what, 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 what it gets you? Start making decisions and get whoopings. 
You know, he said that the Bible said, one scripture said, I teach you the fear of God. Start making decisions and getting whoopings. Some of them whoopings that be, make you feel like you're about to lose your mind. Then you get to the point, like somebody say, well, Bumble Court, take your time. You ain't going to tell me no stuff like that. You ain't going to tell me no stuff like that. You might tell somebody else some stuff like that. You ain't tell me no junk like that. See, I, I'm, I'm, I'm way, 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 way further down the road than you imagine. See, I don't have enough whoopings, and you learn obedience through the things you want. All right? So I've had a lot of suffering. My wisdom is not book knowledge. My wisdom, my wisdom is suffering. My wisdom is experience. And that's why when I tell people stuff, it hurts me because I'm saying they, they think I'm just talking. I'm talking by experience. I've been preaching since 1976. I've been full-time in ministry since, since 1978, you know. And so, I mean, I've made so many mistakes. I've made so many blunders, right? So my wisdom is my wisdom is experience. I'm not just preaching this stuff and telling you stuff and, and just saying this to you like, like some stuff I done come up with, I done read some, some of some uh, looked on the internet. No, this is my life. This is my life. So, so when it, when it comes to certain things and I pray, Lord, don't let me speak unadvisedly. Let me lead by precept and example. Let me show them faithfulness. Let me show them commitment. Let me show them d d diligence. Let me show them uh, committal. Let me show them. Let me show them what it means to love under pressure, what it means to, 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 to overcome evil with good, to render good for evil. Let me show them what it means to be consistent and persistent. Let me be an example. Let me don't preach, but let me, let me live it. Because folk, man, if folk, if folk care about what you say, folk watching you. Folk want to see your consistency. They want to see your commitment. They want to see your loyalty. You understand? They want to see your dedication. They want to see how much, how dedicated you are to this. Now, look, I'm sitting right there, you see. Every day of her life, she has to sit there and watch my commitment. She has to watch my loyalty. She has to watch my life. See, see, you see me at church. She has to see me at home. Am I living this? Am I praying at home? Am I reading my Bible at home? You know, is my life all out of order at home? Am I, am I acting another way at home versus the way I'm acting at church? You see what I'm saying? You know, how is my life? You got what I'm saying? I don't want to live another life away from church. Whatever I'm living in church, I want to live that. You understand? I don't, I don't want to be set up there like being nice and, and sister God in life and then go home and then treat her like a dog. I don't want to just sit up there and live nice and then go home and I'm throwing all up against the wall and cussing out and all that stuff. I don't want to sit up here and act like I'm so nice and then, you know, uh, you know I, I'm not considerate to her. There's things that I, I do for her. I physically, sometimes I don't feel like doing nothing. I don't feel like budging. But I know that, that there's certain things that she has to do that I, I get up and I do it. And she knows it. It's like car work. She knows that that, that, that he going to do this, whether he feels like it or not. You understand what I'm saying? But, but it, 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 it's, 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 it's the way I am. Like I tell y'all, she tell you, I don't argue. I do not argue. If she says something, I tell her something, she says something in, in rebuttal to it, she, 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 this is what she gets from me. You understand? Because I'm not going to go into that. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, if I tell you something, that's the way it is with me. My family is supposed to be around me. I mean, like, and I go about my business. I do what I got to do, but I'm not going to be sitting up here preaching one thing and living another. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be sitting up there look, looking at a bunch of uh, 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 nude stuff and, and all that kind of crazy stuff in my home. You come up in my home, my home is going to be like, like what this is here. And I'm not boasting or nothing. I pray every day. I can't help myself. I cannot help myself. Let me get them set the record straight. I get up every morning with this, these, these, des these, these desperate prayers. Help me, oh God. Lord, uh, 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 Lord, there's no good thing that dwells within me. That is within my flesh. Help me, Lord. Can the Ethiopian change his color? Can a leper change his spot? How then can a man that is accustomed to doing evil turn and do good? Help me, Lord. Lord, I can't do this on my own. You know what I'm saying? You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So everything that I am, I know he's doing it. But now he's doing it 
and I want him to do it, but I ain't going to try to do nothing to get him to undo it. I want to stay in that realm where he's constantly, you know, helping me. I don't want to do nothing to lose that connection with God because I know if I lose that relationship and that connection with God, I'm going back to sinning. I'm going back to drinking. I'm going back to smoking. I'm going back to home. I, without him, I can't make it. Without him, I can do nothing. 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 And so sometimes, sometimes living this life causes you to have to be sanctified, live apart, separated. Like somebody was texting me and said, well, I, I, I just, one of them days I feel so lonely. And I, touched, I texted him back. I said, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. But we're really never alone because he will never leave us nor forsake us. We're just alone on the human level. And sometimes walking this life, you have to walk alone because yeah, uh, humans can be, like old boy say, the less people you know, the easier it is to get to heaven. You see? And so sometimes, you know, you just want to be connected, and the folk you're connected to, them are going to drag you right back into the realm. And so loneliness, loneliness, like I tell people, it's, it's a lonely walk for Bob McCoy. It's very, very lonely. Very, very lonely. I was telling the preacher uh, earlier this morning, it's just very lonely, you know, because, you know, you have to walk alone, and you have to make decisions. You have to, you know, you have to do certain things misunderstood. So all of that's lonely. It's very lonely. But I would rather walk and be humanly lonely than to walk and be God lonely. I can take being humanly lonely. I can take if you don't never call me and don't ever send me a card, don't ever do that. I can take that. I can take that. I done been incarcerated. I've been in, I done been in segregation where you can't get a phone call, you can't you don't get nothing. I done took that and I know it's not good for man to dwell alone. He's a social being, but at the end of the day, you understand what I'm saying? I was able to come through that. I was able to, even even at that, I was able to keep my mind in a certain realm that I was able to deal with that. And I dealt with that in the natural without God. I mean, without, without the so-called Holy Ghost. I know it wasn't nobody but God that kept me during those times. But I'm saying if I was able to go through that then, and here I, is, here I am now, I got the Holy Ghost in peace of mind, the power of God, I can make it. I can make it. When he called Abraham, he called him what? Called him alone, and he blessed him. Y'all listening? So, you know, we, we, we have to get to a place in life. If you really want to make, to, to, to really be a real soldier and a real child of God, one of the things you have to really be willing to do, you have to really be, be willing to make decisions. Can I tell you the first decision you have to learn to make? If any man will come unto me, let him first do what? That's a decision. Now, you think that ain't a decision? Deny himself. And what's connected to yourself? How many things is connected to yourself that you're going to have to deny? That's a decision. And then take up your cross. That's a decision. And then follow me. Imitate me. Copycat me. Live like I live. Walk like I walk. That's a decision. Those are decisions. And the average one of us, we really can't decide. We can't decide. We can't, we can't really decide. You know, we can't make that decision. We can't make that sacrifice. But God bless you today. We appreciate God for you. Now, I want to say this. Those of you in the live stream, it was kind of preluded, man. Just throw that in there and let you know. If you want to go all the way with God, it's got to be total commitment. You know, and it's going to be when you commit it. Sometimes there's sacrifices you have to make. There's decisions you have to make. I, I cried one time for three months over a decision I made. Because I, it hurt me to make the decision. But I cried for three months compared to the equation of me crying for eternity. <laughs> so how long is three months versus a lifetime? Nothing, right? But I cried for three months. I mean, just every day I would stop and it just, just my eyes would fill up with tears. and I had to make the decision. I had to make the decision, but that, but that was years ago. You got what I'm saying? And those little three months are over with, right? You got what I'm saying? But I'm able to go on with my life and go on with my life, and I found out something about making the decision. I don't know why I'm saying this live stream. Maybe it's going to help somebody. I found out about, about making the decision. You think a decision is hard to make because of the way it's going to affect people. Let me tell you something about people. 
folk will get over it. <laughs> They're going on about their business like it, like it. And you sit up there thinking this, I'm going to lose this. this go. I found out. Folk are going about their business. And you sit up there because you can't make a decision. Now you stuck and folk, they, they looking at you. You understand? They're going to talk whether you do or you don't. They'll talk about you because you didn't make a decision. We can share this technique. They ain't, I ain't tell them what to do. They, you know, I ain't trying to hold them up. I wouldn't hold them. See? But that's where it goes. So, one more time. To the book of Deut- Genesis, chapter 49, verse 8. Really, let's do this real quickly. I'm just giving you a prelude. I'm going to teach on the health laws again, uh, the health laws of God. And we're going into it because so many people don't realize the best doctor, when I was, when I was a boy, doctors didn't practice medicine. The Bible, top of the Doc, doctors didn't practice medicine. Doctors did not practice medicine when I was a boy. They practiced preventative medicine because they knew medicine wasn't a cure. It was just an arrest. It wasn't a cure. It was an arrest. Now, when you arrest somebody, it don't mean you got them because they can get arrested and get set free or make bond. You see? So medicine is not designed for the cure. It's designed for the arrest, but what? But but if you if you get the, the real cure, see the best the best doctor is one who practices preventative medicine, because he knows that if I give you the medicine, it may stop one thing, but it opens a door for other things. That's what you call side effects, right? Because what I'm gonna give you ain't got no business being in your body. If you think right, rest right, eat right, your body is a self-contained mechanism. It's a self-contained mechanism. But if I give you something from the outside to put in a self-contained mechanism that ain't supposed to be there, it has side effects. Because your body is made like it's a machine. It has antibodies. It has immune systems. It has, you know what I'm saying? So if you throw something in, in there to make the antibodies not work or make the immune system not work or, you understand what I mean? Make the certain enzymes in your body stop functioning. Then you throw stuff off. And what was supposed to be working here is not working no more, so it throws this off over here. So now I got my, I got my, I got my, I got my liver working back right, but my kidneys then with them fail. So I'm getting my kidneys right. Now, 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 now my eyes are getting dim. So everything is connected, right? So the best doctor is one who, who practice, practice preventative medicine. Like the best preacher. He practiced preventative sin. So if he preaches the right word to keep you from, see, people wait till you sin, then go to preach it on your sin. But if I can preach a message to you to keep you from sinning, then you don't have to worry about the death and the consequences that come with it. Y'all listening? All right, pay attention, those of you in the live stream. We're going to just give you a prefix real quickly, okay? <clears throat> now pay attention to the wisdom of the word of God. Is that okay? Watch the wisdom. To the book of Genesis, chapter 49. I'm just read this over again for those of you that didn't get it at first. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 8, I believe it is. Verse, verse 10. No, no, no. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll read it from verse 8. And Judah, thou art he whom my bro- thy brother shall praise. A hand shall be, shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down and he crouched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? Tenth verse is the key verse. <coughs> he said the scepter shall not what? Now scepter is usually a... a, 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 a uh, like a rod that a king usually has. Like, you know, like Aaron's rod, it's like the scepter let, let you know that, we, that I'm in rule. And then but the, the scepter, the rule of the kingship shall not depart from what? Judah. Now pay attention. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet, right? Between his feet represents his loins, right? In other words, a lawgiver shall not depart from the loins of Judah. Well, that's strange because the lawgivers was not Judites. The lawgivers were Levites. So the law is now getting ready to come from Judah. But if you keep reading it, 
you know, uh, 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 it goes in. He's talking about talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. He said, "The lawgiver shall not depart from Judah. I mean, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall be the gather, shall the gathering of the people. What? What? Talking about Jesus. Now go with me to the Saint John chapter one and verse fourteen, real quickly. We got to rush this. This is not what I'm gonna minister on. on, on, on seven. It's not. This is not what I'm, I'm gonna minister on. But I got to give you a prelude. I got to give you kind of like a." like a foundation. I want you to listen to me real carefully. Those of you in the live stream, amen, this may be part two, three, four of this segment, but you need to get this. We're in an hour right now till you really need to know what I'm preaching. You know, everybody can't hear me. Everybody's not assigned to me. But those of you that are assigned to me, you have to pay close attention. Everybody don't have a Noah. You need a Noah in an hour like this. You need a prophet. You need that apostolic anointing in an hour like this. So the book of St. John, chapter 1, verse 1. St. John 1 and 1. I mean, excuse me, St. John, chapter 1, verse 14. It said, the word was made flesh to, to, and, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Full of what? Now remember now, the, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, neither the lawgiver from between his feet, until the Lord bring again until Shiloh come, right? And the Bible said, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Full of grace and what? Truth. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, this is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me. He was before me. 16th verse. And of his fullness have we all what? Received. Have we all received grace for what? Grace. Now, watch the 17th verse. The 17th verse is going to get real clear. The 17th verse said, for the what? <laughs> for the, now, pay attention now. You got to listen to this because people don't understand. When they say the law has been done away with, they don't know what's been done away with. They don't know what they're excluding. He said the law, for the law was given by what? The law was given by what? Say, say, but. Now, wait a minute. Now, but means, uh, then, then, then there's something that can exclude that. It's something that can, can, can erase that prior statement. You understand what I mean? That but, is, it can erase that prior statement. Y'all listening to me? Right? He said, but, grace and what? Now, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? Came by Jesus Christ. Grace and, grace and conjunction with the grace comes what? Truth came by who? Uh, to the book of St. John, chapter 8, verse 32. St. John 8 and 32. Make it first 31. St. John 8 and 31. Top of the minute. St. John 8 and 31. You got to make sure they hear this. St. John 8 and 31. If you got it, say amen. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my what? My word, then, you are, then ye are my disciples indeed. Now watch the 32nd verse. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by who? He said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? It, you'll know the truth, and the truth shall do what? You'll know the truth. Now, all, now understand about the know. The know is a, a oneness, a, a relationship. See, see, some folk, they, you, you, you can tell folks something, and they think they know something. You don't know until you've had the relationship of it. See, a lot of times, we, we're got, you, like, like somebody could tell you something, right? I could tell you that somebody told me that such and such said something. And, and if you're not careful, you, you'll take that and think you know something. But I done got it from somebody that told me. And no telling, they done got it from somebody that told them. But do I really know? Do you really know now? See, you don't know because you're not in relationship. You wasn't there. You wasn't in the relationship. So that's why what, what happens, we, we, the, 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 the way we live for God is through gossip. We should never live through God through gossip. We should live through God. We should live f f through God and for God through, the, f through relationship, through the oneness, through the real no. You got what I'm talking about? 
You understand what I'm saying? That's something that you got. That's personal. He said, he said, but, he said, but, uh, he said, but I am the way. I mean, excuse me. He said, uh, uh, you will know the truth and the truth will do what? To the book of St. John chapter 14. We'll rush this real quickly. 14 and 6. St. John 14 and 6. Make it 14, 14 and 4. St. John 14 and 4. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye what? And the way ye what? Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Watch. You'll know the truth, and the truth will do what? You'll know the truth, and the truth will do what? It'll make you free, right? Jesus saith unto him, sixth verse, I am the what? I am the way, not and. I am the way, the truth, not a truth. I am the truth. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by what? But by me. To the 17th verse. St. John 14 and 17. Make it, make it, make it, make it uh, uh, 15. St. John 14 and 15. If you love me, you'll do what? Now, watch this. That's, 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 that's a revelation right within itself. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Because there's no way you can love him without having his commandments. How in the world you think you can love God without God? See, how can we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? This man literally furnishes everything for you to be saved. In other words, he furnishes the faith for you to believe him. God gives to every man a measure. Of, so he gives you faith to believe him, and then he gives you love to love him. So he equips you with everything. When You understand what I mean? If you love me, you'll do what? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You understand? If you keep my commandments, that's a sign you love me. Because you can't keep my commandments if you don't love me. And if you love me, then you're one with me. And guess what I am? I am the commandment. <laughs> How can you love somebody and don't and don't 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 be a part of them? If if if, if in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. How the way you gonna say you love God and don't love His word? How you gonna say you love God and don't love His word? Some of you setting up listening in the live stream. You say you love God, but as soon as somebody go to preaching that word, you get offended. So how in the world you gonna get offended about somebody you in love with? Can I tell you about tell you, tell you something? If a person in love, I don't care if a person breath stink, I don't care if they sick, I don't care if they cripple, I don't care if they deformed. In love, make them tolerate whatever it is. See, like, appreciate, love, tolerate. If you're in love, if you love me, keep my commandments. And my commandments are what? Not grievous. But that ain't what I want to talk on. We just gonna skip it, okay? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you for how long? Yeah. Forever. Now, 17th verse, even the what? The spirit of what? The spirit of what? Jesus said, I am the way. The, he, said, he, said, he said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free, right? But he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, you understand? No man comes to the Father but by me. But then he spoke about even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive it, because it seeth them not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. Watch now, pay attention. Ye know him, for he dwelleth where? Where he dwelleth where? I'm talking the spirit of truth dwelleth with you and shall be where? And shall be where? Now he dwells with me, but he's going to be in me, right? He said, I will not leave you what? I will not do what? Leave you confidence. But who's coming? Now here he's going to break it down in plain, simple, 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 simple English. He said, even the spirit of truth, I mean, excuse me, uh, yet a little while, he said, I will not leave you because a little while, and the world see me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live where? Uh, now you shall live also. And at that day, you shall know that I'm where? In my Father, and ye where? Ye in me, and I am where? I am in you, right? So you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free, right? So now you know what he's talking about, right? The spirit of truth, right? Now you know what the spirit of truth is? Spirit of truth is the Holy Ghost. Spirit of truth is the Holy Ghost. But there's three to bear record in heaven, St. John 5 and 7. There's three to bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the what? 
Now, please pay attention because I'm driving to somewhere, okay? All right? St. John chapter 16, verse 13. Make it 12, 16 and 12. I have yet many things that to say unto you, but you cannot do what? Now, say that. Now, watch this. Now, this is what you got to understand. That's why people say, well, Brother McCoy compromised him. No, I understand that a kindergarten can't comprehend what a 12th grader has. You see? But the common denominator, both of them are students. But they're on different levels and different speeds, right? So that they that are weak in the faith, weak in the faith, receive not with doubt for disputation. You don't doubt their salvation because they don't have the same faith you got because God gives to every man a measure of faith according to the gift of Christ. According to the anointing that's in your life, is the more Christ he gives you, then the more faith you get, right? Faith coming by what? Hearing. By hearing about hearing what? So if he give every man a measure of faith, that means that that person, that he's only allowed that person to have a certain amount of knowledge. So you cannot bash the person or say the person is not uh, 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 saved because they're not on your level of thinking. But that person should never get satisfied. You should never get satisfied in kindergarten. You should always desire to go further in God, grow in grace and grow in the knowledge. The Bible said he gave them power to do what? Become the sons of God. So you're always in pro progression. You should never get satisfied. See, what the church done did and the way the preachers are doing, they get in the church satisfied. You don't get on a level to stay there. You have to move because if Satan is always moving, where well, you're going up and down, to and fro, you know, evil men and seducers waxing worse, sin abounds. So everything is moving, right? So if it's moving in the negative, you need to move in the positive. You can't stay on that same level. If you do, that's how you get caught up, and that's how you go back to, to, to doing things that you used to do. That's how you go back to drinking, back to smoking, back to cussing, back to talking. You understand? And then you'll start going back to doing stuff that you didn't even do in sin. Some of you wasn't talkers. Some of you wasn't in everybody's business when you was in sin. That devil will make you go back to doing stuff that you didn't even do. You understand what I'm saying? Because you start picking up other spirits. You start picking up other things that's worse than what you used to do. You understand what I mean? Some of you were so private. Some of you were so so quiet and stuff. You didn't get in nobody's business. You didn't get in, you didn't get in none, none of that stuff. You didn't, you didn't have a response. You didn't like people coming to you talking about, Man, I don't know about that. I mean, I ain't into that. You have to deal with that. You had that kind of response, but now you like into everything. You know, you have to be careful because the devil will get you caught up. And before you know it, man, you, your life is just, you know, where you even in sin, you were progressing. We have to progress in God. We got to go further in God. Is that okay? Uh, so he, he said, I have many things I would love to see, and you have, but you cannot bear them now. 13 verse, how be it when he, the spirit of what? Truth is come. Now pay attention now. Come, he will do what? Guide you into what? Now wait a minute now. Now he's going to guide. There's things that I love to say unto you, but you're not able to bear them now. But because you can't bear them, I can't let you stay on that same level. So I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you the spirit of truth. And it's going to guide you into what? You can't get satisfied. You got to have the all truth. Because the more truth you have, the more power you have. You understand? The more truth you have, the more strength you have, right? You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you what? Right? So the more truth you get, the more freedom you get. The more you get liberated from the powers of hell. See, so what we want to do, we get stuck because our flesh don't want to give up certain things. And that's what happens with Brother McCoy. Folk don't want to go no further than God. But me, I want to die. I'm tired of me. I'm tired of me uh, causing me to get whoopings. I'm tired of me uh, uh, having me to suffer consequences. I'm tired of me, you understand, uh, uh, having to deal with, you know, uh, retributions and all that kind of stuff. I'm tired of me having to deal with certain deaths. You know what I'm talking about? I don't, I don't want that. I'm tired of me causing other folks to stumble. I'm tired of me bringing reproaches, reproaches on, not just the church, my family, everybody connected to me. I'm tired of failing. I'm tired. So I want to go further in God. I want to get to the point where I can mature in God. You got what I'm saying? Till I can be a blessing instead of a cursing. I can be a stepping stone instead of a stumbling block. Y'all listening to me? And so this is what we need to do. We need to be builders instead of destroyers. To the book, and this is it, this last one, and we're going to take it on, okay? To the book of 2 Timothy 3 and 7, maybe 3 and 6, let's see. 2 Timothy. 
3 and 6. When he went on to talk about, you know, spirit speaking of expression in the latter days, you know, some got depart from the face, so forth and so on. But he said, you know, traitors had him in a heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such a way. Sixth verse. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin, led away with what? Now watch this seventh verse. Now this is some sad stuff. Ever learning, ever learning, and never, and never able to come until the knowledge of the way. Now, is that some sad stuff? You steady going to seminars, you steady going to, to classes, you steady you know, to getting degrees, and you steady, but you never come into the knowledge of the truth. And that's what you understand, steady, steady learning, you know what I mean? We got plaques on the wall, but, but, but just so easily offended, just so, just so weak, and not coming into the knowledge of truth. When you come into that knowledge of truth, it's going to give you strength. It's going to free you. It's going to give you liberty. It's going to free you from weakness. It's going to free you from sin. It's going to free you from failure. Ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Y'all ready? To the book of Psalms, 119, verse 142, and we're going to go on with this word. Those of you out there on the live stream, we're going to teach on, once again, the health laws of God. I know a lot of people don't believe in the commandments of God. They don't believe. They think that the laws of God have been done away with. If God do away with the laws, let me explain this how it works. <laughs> the heaven, the earth, he said, before one job, that's Matthew 5, I believe it is, think not, 17, I believe, he said, think not that I come to destroy the law, but I come to fulfill it. Before one job, or one tiller shall any wise pass from the law. Heaven and earth will pass away. Because the, the, the heaven, the earth, and the universe, all of that is law. Everything is based on laws. If you think I'm lying, you got the laws of gravity. you got certain laws that's holding things in motion. If the laws be done away with, then everything will go into chaos. See, we just think of the laws like the, the thou shalt not. The, the law itself, the law itself, I'm going to explain it to you in a minute, right? The law, the, 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 Moses, by, by, uh, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by what? Uh, Psalms 119, verse 142. If you got it, uh, if you got it, say amen. He said these words. Psalms 119, verse 142. He said, thy righteousness is a what? Now, the righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, but the law, the law is what? The law is what? Now, the law is not a truth. The law is what? Wait a minute. The law is what? Now, watch this now. I'm going to show you something. The law is what? The truth. But you will know the truth, and the truth will do what? So the church, well, we're, we're up under grace, and we are saved by grace through faith. It's a gift of God and not of works, not of yourself, lest any man should boast. Now. Now, once we're saved, you know, I'm not doing miracles by the works of the law. I'm not, you know, casting out there by the works of the law, but I'm doing it by faith. But faith without works is dead. So my faith is really my obedience, right? But now, once I get saved, once I get saved from sin, St. John chapter, chapter 3, verse, verse 4, sin is the transgression of the law. He that sinned transgressed also the law. Romans 7 and 7, uh, I had not known sin, but by the law. I had not known lust, except the law said, thou shalt not covet. You got what I'm saying? So, so, so we get our knowledge of sin, and I believe it is Romans chapter 3, we get our knowledge of sin from the law. You got what I'm saying? We get our knowledge of sin from the law. So, I, and now he come and save me by grace, save me by grace through faith from my sins, right? Now, once he saves me from my sins, God is not a half-done God. Whatsoever God does, he does, it for, he does it forever. He don't add nothing to it, neither take anything away. And the way of God is perfect. Perfect means complete, solid, without error. So when he saves you, in other words, I'm sending you my laws. These are my laws. These are the way I want you to live. But when I gave you the commandments, like, like I told them, that people don't understand this, when God gave the law to Moses, he put them in his hand. And put him in his hand, representing his flesh. 
So what does flesh always do with the law? Same thing it's going to always do. It breaks them. But God said, Moses, now shadow and a type of things to come. I want you to hew me out two more tables of stone, bring them back up on the mountain, and I'm going to write, because you broke them don't mean they broke. I only wrote them for you to see them. But whether you see them or not, there's laws. So come back up on the mountain and write, I'm going to write the, second, the, the same thing on the second tables as I wrote on the first. But this time, I want you to build a tabernacle. I want you to build it according to the fashion which you see in heaven. And I want you to build an ark. I want you to build an ark. So this time, I'm not going to put the commandments in your hand. And if I do give them to you, I want you to immediately do something with them. Take these commandments and put them inside the ark. Put them inside the ark. Because as long as they're in the ark, then your hands can't break them. Symbolic, I will no longer write my laws on tables of stone. But I put my laws in the fleshly tables of your heart. I put them in your heart by my spirit. You understand what I'm saying? We talk about the spirit of truth, right? The Bible said the law, the Bible said the righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And the law is the truth, right? So now... The laws are not done away with. Jesus said, think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets, but I come to fulfill them. You understand? I come to fulfill. When we look, we church where we come up with all kind of like definitions. Like fulfill means to complete, uh, to do away with. I come to, fulfill means just what it means. It's a, it's a compound word, fulfill. Switch it around, it means what? Fill it what? Now you think you can't keep the laws of Moses. You can't keep the laws of Christ. Let me break it down to you. If you ain't got Jesus, you can't keep not one law. Number one, Moses, what they say, law said, that thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus' law says, if a man looks upon a woman, I'm going to fulfill it because you think you got to go to a motel to have sex before you commit adultery. But I'm going to show you how adultery really works. You dealing with the fruit. He said, but the real law deals with the root. See, when he comes, he ain't just dealing with fruit. He's going to lay the ax to the Right? So, so the law said thou shalt not commit adultery. But I'm saying that if you, if you look upon a woman to lust, that's why women should dress right so that they don't give people a right to stumble. Because that flesh, if you, if you look upon a woman to lust after you committed adultery with her already, where? Nah, Moses' law said thou shalt not kill, right? But I'm going to fulfill it. I'm going to get it complete, right? I'm going to the root of it. I'm going to the root of it because the, the murder starts at the root. The murder starts at the root, right? Something has got to aw awfully happen for you to murder somebody. I'm not talking about an accident. I'm talking about murder. So it's got to be a root. It's got to be some hatred. It's got to be some anger. It's got to be something here, right? So if, if, if the law said thou shalt not kill, but I'm saying if a man hate his brother without a cause, he's a murderer already. And then he goes on to different laws like, you know, you, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? And he, 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 he defines them to fulfill them, to show you that it's, it's even deeper. And you're really going to have to have me to walk like this. But the law has got to be kept. Only the pure in heart going to see God. You can't live any kind of way. I can read the scripture after scripture and let you know homemongers, fornicators, effeminate, those that defile themselves with mankind, covetous, idolaters, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let no man deceive you by any means, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You understand? The Bible said, he that sinneth is of the devil. For the, sinneth, for the devil sinneth from the, from the beginning for this purpose for the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, right? So when he comes, he comes to what? Destroy because we sin, right? We sin, right? And the ways of sin is what? Right? So he became the sacrificial lamb. He became, he became the, the, the scapegoat. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God through him, right? Now, through him, right? We're, we're, we're more than conquerors through him. We got the victory through him, right? And the life that we now live, we live it by the faith of the Son of God, right? You know, as I live, even so shall you live by the, and the Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I, but the Christ that lives within me in the life that I now live. And I live it by the faith of the Son of God. So everything that I'm doing, I'm living it by him. I can't live it on my own. I'm on, I'm, it's, it's, I got to be led by the Spirit because my flesh, if I'm in the flesh, that's an automatic, that's an automatic disqualification because they that are in the flesh cannot please God. 
They that are in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are in the spirit do mind the things of the spirit, right? To be carnally minded is what? That's why you want to come to church and you want to hear this kind of word that I'm preaching. You're going to get offended every single time because I'm not dealing with that carnal nature. See, you in the flesh and you're you thinking right down here with this level. You think about what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel. Holy Ghost is different. It's way above that. It's way above the, that, that, that sensual nature. See, that stuff is devilish, right? So it goes above that. It, you know, that, that, that real spiritual don't make no sense. See, you go about what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you feel. And that's how you function. And when you do that, then you don't never get to see what God. See, you're in this flesh, so you're in the dirt. So when you're in the dirt, you think you think dirty, you see dirty, you talk dirty, you act dirty. But if you're going to see God, you got to come out that dirt. You got to shake yourself from the dust of the earth and arise, and then you'll be able to sit down and get in the realm and relax with God and know that God is in total control. God's ruling, God's reigning. So you so busy in the flesh, all you see is what they're doing to you. Get in the spirit and you'll see what God's doing for you. I got agitators and ir irritators and word raiders and liars and haters. I got them there on purpose. They're there for your fortification. They're there for, for your stepping stone. They're there to take you to the next level in life because I'm going to test you. I'm not going to I'm not going to give you nothing unless I know you qualify. If I was to give you, if I was to give you my power and my anointing, my wisdom right now with that nasty attitude you got, how many folk would you curse? You cursing folk now. You putting, you saying, speaking words on people right now. And you ain't even got nothing. Watch, see how God going to kill them. The devil ain't nothing but a lie. Watch, watch, ain't, they ain't gonna, watch, you doing stuff right now. How you going to qualify to get something that can really damn folks? I want you to get to the point where you're a blessing curse now. I want you to get to the point where you overcome evil with good. I want you to get to the point where you render good for evil. I want you to get to the point where, 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 where you, 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 you uh, give place to the wrath. I want you to get to the point where you agree with your adversary while you're in the way. I want you to get to the point, you understand what I mean, where you, you're able to look at it, and even though maybe it might cause tears and it may cause you to hurt for that moment, but after a while you come back because you realize they couldn't have done it to you unless God let it happen. And then in his word, as long as I see the word of God, it's going to change my attitude. Let this mind be in you, which is also in what? Why, well, now, wait a minute. Now, Jesus had this mind. Now, no, ain't no, you, ain't, you ain't resist a, a struggle against sin. Uh, resist against blood striving against sin. You ain't resist against blood striving against sin. You ain't nobody. Ain't nobody beat you and cut you all up. Ain't nobody tortures you, right? Right? You got what I'm saying? Ain't nobody tortured you, but you understand what I'm saying? But look what look what they did to this man. Look at the stuff they did to this man. But this is what I want you to get to the point. This, I want you to get to this point. This man come to die for them people, right? But this man could have called 12 legions of angels. This man could have spoke a word and annihilated all of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got what I'm saying? Right? But this man is your example to show you the purpose, right? He said, Father, forgive them for they, they don't really know what they're doing. And the reason you can't forgive people and you can't let folk go because you don't really know. You don't know what they're doing. See? So you can't let them go. You think they're doing something to hurt you. You think they're doing something to try to, to do something against you. Man, I've learned one of the greatest wisdoms, man, in my life. All of, and, 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 and I don't just welcome it. I'm not, you know, just asking for trouble. But every time trouble come, I got this. I know I got a blessing given to come. You understand? I, every time somebody talk about me, lie on me, somebody betray me, somebody forsake me, I got a blessing given to come. And the reason it's going to come because of my attitude about what they're doing. My attitude, see, your attitude about, about what's, what they're doing to you is going to change the whole, whole, whole game. See, I can look at my crucifixion and look at these boogers doing it. Look at him, man, low down, dirty, man. Look at Peter, man, bags, man, betray me. Look at, look at those Judas, man, dirty boogers, but they just take that cross, you understand what I mean? Bible said, who for the joy that was? Where? Set where? Wait a minute, who for the joy that was set where? For him endured the cross, despising the shame. See? So when you get to understand what they was doing to him, he saw the revelation. They wasn't doing nothing to me. They literally are my transportation to take me right where I want to go, to give me what I really need, to put me where I'm supposed to be. See, you understand what I mean? They don't even know it. They're going to put me right in position 
to where I'm supposed to be. These are the ones going to let me go to hell, get the keys, rise with all power to heaven and earth, and then set me on the right hand of the throne of the Father. But see, you don't see it that way. You see your enemy as your enemy. You see liars as liars. You see haters as haters. So you can't never go nowhere because you become a part of the process. You become a part of it. So you become a hater with the hater. You become a liar with the liars. You become a talker with the talkers. But if you can look at it, let it put it back, put them up under your feet, put the devil where he belong. Put the devil up under your feet when he rises up against you and you got him in the position though he should never be on your shoulder. God, he's the lifter up of your head. He raised your head up of where? Above your where? Above your enemy. The devil ain't got no business ever getting in your head. The devil ain't never got no business ever getting in your head. Never got no business getting up. You ain't got no business written no space up in your in your head. He ain't got no business written space in your head. Some of us allow the devil to just get in our head and just, just wreck us and just I mean, eternally damn us. And we get caught up in the mix with him. You understand what I mean? Instead of being like Jesus, he could have been sitting on the cross just cursing people. Man, Jesus, remember, I ain't remember nothing. Man, shut up. Man, get away from me, right? This man, stop. This man got that thing so in tune to, he said, Father, forgive them for what they do. He said, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me. Wait, wait up. You know, you want you at that point in time, you want some sympathy. You want some body. You want some weeping. Oh, oh, man. Oh, they said that did that to you. Oh, you need, you know, that, that stuff. That hell. Oh, you know, you need some. But he was saying, no, no, no. Don't weep for me. Weep for yourself and for your children. Jesus, Jesus, uh, when you enter into your kingdom, would you remember me? This man on the cross. This man in agony done been tortured. He said, this day shall thou be with me in paradise. Focus, focus on the purpose of God, that you understand the purpose of God, that, 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 no, that there's nothing happening to me that's not happening for me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm wounded, I'm bruised, and chastised, I'm whipped. I'm, I, this is all for you, but God ain't going to let me do something for you with the right attitude and not get nothing for myself. See, that's what I'm saying. You got to have the right. God ain't going to let me give all this to you and nothing that he ain't going to give me nothing. God's not forgetful of your labors of love. God gonna remember you and what you and, 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 and what you've done for the saints. So God highly exalted him. God raised him up, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the same, and now setting down. Setting down means you ain't doing nothing now. Wait until his enemies become his footstool. Y'all listening? Can you get the same attitude? No, because you don't know the truth. 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 Your attitude about, see, when God revealed this to me, this is what the Sabbath day means to me. This is what the Sabbath day. There's some, there's some trials that you can go through and knock you smooth out. Some trials and make you forget, make, make you forget there's a God. There's some stuff you can go through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and make you forget there's a God. But that's why he said, remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. It's, it's, it, you, can't, you can't remember the Sabbath without remembering that God is in total control. He's the creator. He created not only, he created not only the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, the fish of the sea, the host. The host. He created the host, the armies. Whether the evil or the good, he created host, angels. Every spirit that, that you're dealing with, everything that's dealing with people, that's in people dealing with you, he created them. Every demon, every imp every, that, that is in people, agitating, irritating, worried, causing uh, afflictions, and, 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 and he, he created them. All things are made by him and for them, whether things in heaven, things in earth, whether things visible, invisible, whether principalities, powers, Mites, I mean thrones, dominions, all things are made by him and for him. And he's before what? Don't nothing get in front of him. Don't nothing get in front of him. That means that everything is behind him. Everything could by, could by him, all things consist. Don't nothing move without him. Don't nothing. It's not a fair road that's getting hardened without him. That's not a Delilah that's, that's tricking you. That, you understand what I'm saying? That's not an Eve that, that's giving you, a, uh, uh, giving you this word. I set that stuff up. This is me. That's not a Judas. He was born that way. 
that the scriptures might be fulfilled. It was already written. He was the fulfillment of an end that was already sought out in the beginning. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. In other words, he knows, he knows the end because he, he created the end in the beginning. That's what prophecy is. All he does is let you get in his mind, and he can tell you what's going to happen before it happened. There's nothing new under the sun. What is has been and what is to be has already been. So I can take you into the future and give you a prophetic word. You ain't got nothing new. It's already done. I'm just letting you get the mind of God to be able to show them people what I already know is going to happen. You see what I'm saying? So everything that's happening in your life, that's no accident. There's no coincidence. What sickness, what death, what divorce, what separation, what pain, what anguish, what betrayal, what heartache, what haters, what world raiders, what agitators. Whatever you're going through is a God thing. God set that thing up, and that's why you got to get the right attitude, because if you don't get the right attitude, you cannot go nowhere in life. It ain't the trial that's holding you. The trial don't hold us. <laughs> The trial don't hold us. Tell me what date did the trial happen? You know what holds you? <laughs> your own heart, your own memory. Your own memory keeps you stuck right there. Your own memory. The trial is over. Trial over and done with. Can't undo it. Can't unring the bell. Trial over and done with. But what keeps you stuck in the trial is your heart. The way you, the condition of your heart concerning the trial, we got you stuck. It ain't the trial, trial over with. They didn't say what they had to say, it's over with. They done done what they had to do, it's over with. You don't want stuck because of the condition of your heart. You can't let go of what done happened. Trial is over with. If we could get over with the trial, a lot of stuff would be, them, be, be we come out of it just like that. But we can't because we set them trying to hold stuff because our, our, our heart holds on the stuff that all, that's over with, done with, and ain't nothing you can do about it. So we get stuck with nothingness. And nothingness, stuck with nothingness, don't get nothing. Can't go nowhere to get nothing. And so you just stuck with a bunch of nothingness. You can't undo what's been done. You can't, uh, you can't take back what they done said. You can't take back what they done done. That's done. That's done. And the only thing you can do is recondition your heart to not allow what they've done to stop you from going forward in your heart. That's why it's so important to for, in other words, turn it loose, let it go, release it because of. Because if I don't let them go, I can't be let go. And so many people stuck right now because they can't let go, mad with their mama, mad with their daddy, mad with their pastor, mad with their ex-husband, ex-wife, and et cetera, et cetera. Can't go further. And it don't make no difference if you get another wife. You, you, you didn't let the first one go, if that second wife would be held hostage. If you didn't let that last pastor go that hurt you, the second pastor would be held hostage. You understand? Whatever friend you got, if, if you don't let what that, that other friend that betrayed you go, your, your new friend going to be held hostage. You'll be, you'll be holding them hostage because you won't be able to trust them, and you ain't going to be able to, you understand what I mean? So they can't really go where they want to go because your trust level won't let them go. <laughs> so you hold up life because you can't let stuff go. But what, you, what you've gone through was designed to take you to another level. And let me show you this. I'm dealing with health, right? I'm dealing with health. And because you can't let stuff go, it affects the way you think. And your mind is what controls your body. Your mind is what controls your body. So if I can't let it go, then it affects my stress level. My stress level affects my immune system. And if my immune system goes to my brain trying to deal with the stuff I won't let go, then if I have an involuntary sickness or disease that comes to my body, right, then my immune system is so busy trying to figure out why I'm, I'm so mentally upset and emotionally upset about 
till it can't go down and help my heart and help my, my lungs and help my kidneys. So now I'm having strokes. I got high blood pressure. My body's off whack. My eating orders, I, I, I got a, 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 my eating orders out of whack. Do you not know your emotions will change your eating order? I'm here to, as a testimony. Yo, 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 your emotions will change your eating order. You will not be eating because you're hungry. You'll be eating for comfort. You're not eating for, you're not eating because you're hungry. You're eating for comfort. And then you start eating discomfort foods to comfort. So you start eating ice cream. You start eating sweets. You start eating all kind of stuff, right? Now you got kidney stones. Now you got sick of diabetes. Now you got, because of what? An emotion. These are emotional things. These are emotional things that will affect your, 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 your way of eating. And 75% of your health is based on your eating. That's why when you go into the hospital, the first thing they do is put you on a diet. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You're not paying attention. All right? So, so you know the truth and the truth will make you free, right? Now, I want you to do something with me, okay? Now, they, they're, they're teaching you that the laws have been done away with and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, so now just say the laws have been done away with, right? So it's okay to kill. It's okay to steal. It's okay to bear false witness. It's okay to commit adultery. It's okay to, you, you understand what I mean? Just no laws. It's okay to rape. It's okay to molest. It's okay to just burglarize. It's okay to just go just take somebody's car. There has to be laws for protection. There got to be laws for peace. There has to be laws for order. Laws brings a form. <laughs> Where there's no law, there's no format. Where there's no laws on the job, you got laws, right? There's certain times you have to come to church, to, I mean to work, you have what you call the work log. They call it the work log, right? Right? They got certain things that you have to do, right? That's the order of it, right? And that order, that, that, that law keeps the form of the business, right? If, if your format is to, is to keep, the, keep the grease, if you're working at a fast food to keep the grease chain, you know, for the French fries, you understand what I'm saying? If you don't keep that, you know, you, you mess up the fries. And if some folk come and tell the fast food, they don't want no hamburger, they want nothing but what? So now you get ready to mess up the form, the order. You got what I'm saying? You get ready to mess up the order. Now, can I take your... <laughs> well, you can't take... I can't take your order if there's no law. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't take your order if there's no law. I can't take it. There has to be law. There has to be a law. The Bible said the earth was without form and void. Well, where there's no, there's no law, there's no order, there's no form, and when there's no order, no, 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 no law, no order, no form, then it makes things void, void, nothing, nothing. And so that's why the devil, he don't care nothing about this church now. Church ain't got nothing. They can't do nothing to him because he respects, he respects order. He's a legalist. He's an accuser of the brother. He's a legalist. And if you don't go by the order, you understand what I mean? He loves that. The Bible said, whatsoever you do, do it in decency and in. It's got to be in order. Your body has to function. Your body, your physical body. <clears throat> when I was in school, we studied the anatomy. You know, we studied the anatomy of the human body. And everything has to function in order. Everything, your, your body functions like a machine. And, 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 and not, you don't believe this, but your, 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 your body has a rhythm to it. Your body has a rhythm to it. You know what I'm saying? They call it your biorhythm. Everything is law. It's got to be in sync. You know what I'm saying? Don't let anybody tell me you don't need your kidney, you don't need your spleen. You need every part that you got. Now, you can, you can, I'm not saying you can't live without a spleen or you can't live without a kidney, 
But I'm saying something about you is unbalanced. You, ain't, you, ain't, you can't function fully like another normal person that has both of them. Something, something in your body is, is, is lacking. You see what I mean? But everything has got a biorhythm. Everything has to be in, in, in sync. Because if it's not, if it's not, it throws something off balance. Like, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, in your ear, they got a thing called a stirrup. Right? Now, how many have ever seen a leveler? Like a carpenter with a leveler. Anybody seen a leveler? Raise your hand if you've seen a leveler. Like, you seen a leveler? And on a leveler got what on inside of it? Fluid, right? Fluid, right? And so what that level does, it got fluid, right? So what the fluid does is you want to balance it. You make sure that the bubble is right centered, right? Inside your ear <laughs> is levelers. You know how they say my equilibrium, my equilibrium is off. <laughs> Folks folk don't understand this. I'm, I'm trying to help you with the health. Your equilibrium is off, right? Your balances are off. That, that, that level in your, 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 your whole body is balanced. It's balanced. You got what I'm saying? And so you have to, you have to think right. You have to eat right. You have to rest right in order for your body to function. And there's a lot of people that cannot really get a hold of God because of the way they eat, it messes with their soul. You have foods called aphrodisiacs. Aphrodisiacs will mess with your soul. Aphrodisiacs will bring, bring, bring a sensation to you to have you, instead of you eating to just get full, aphrodisiacs will make you eat till you want to do something you ain't got no business doing. There's certain foods that can, that can mess with your attitude. Can, I, can we go into the Word of God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To the book of Genesis, real quickly. Now, it won't take long, and I'm sorry. This is going to be a very, very long uh, segment here. We're just taking our time with us today. And those of you on the live stream, hey, amen, this is Saturday. You shouldn't want to do nothing but hear the Word of God. Can you imagine sitting with a man and all he did from, 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 from sun up, just reading the Word of God until sundown? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about 12 hours reading that word. To the book of Genesis, chapter 7, verse 1. I want you to pay attention, all right? Now, they say the laws have been done away with. So why you got so many sick folks? You got folks trumpet in Zion. You know, they, they play them with stuff, and they think you can just do anything you want to do and live any kind of way you want to live. And you don't understand, your body has mechanisms, and it's, and it's set up for to be self-contained, you know, your body will defend itself. Your body will defend itself. It, it has an immune system. But you have to, your immune system is like, it's like the armed forces of the United States. One of the things that the armed forces do, they're stickler on these things. They're stickler on exercise, resting, and eating. It's three things that your armed service, if, you're, if you're, 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 your soldiers in, in the United States Army, didn't rest right, didn't eat right, didn't exercise right, they can't defend you. If the United States Army didn't rest right, eat right, exercise right, they can't defend you. Well, it's likewise in your physical body. If you don't eat right, rest right, exercise right, you understand what I mean? Then, you, then your immune system cannot defend you. And that's why we have poor, poor, poor immune system. Because we, we said we, we, we don't rest right, then we eat wrong. You understand? And then the stuff you eat keeps you from resting right. Yeah. When you eat the wrong thing, have you with acid indigestion, you ain't going to sleep. Eat the wrong things, have your head hurt, and you ain't going to sleep. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So you ain't resting right, you ain't eating right. And God knows if you're sick, you ain't going to be trying to do no exercise. You ain't trying to do that if you ain't sick. Y'all listening? Pay attention. Right? Genesis 7 and 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, now this is before Moses was ever on the scene. Moses, but no mosaic law was nothing. Pay attention. Those of you in the live stream, I'm going to take this word real quickly. Got about, about, about seven, eight scriptures, maybe a little bit more, but it won't take me long. Is that okay? 
The Bible said, and the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thou, for, for, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Second verse, Genesis 7 and 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee sevens, by sevens, male and his female, and the beasts that are not clean by two, male and his female. Now, I want you to do your equation. Can, I, can we talk? Now, I want you to take the clean seven, clean seven, male and his female. Of the unclean, two, male and the female. All I want you to do is take two of them, male and the female. If they'd have ate one of them, you would have never seen another unclean. But he said, take the seven. So that means you can eat, eat, you can eat all, of, you can eat five of them. As long as you keep a male and a female, you can have reproduction. Now, this was clean and unclean before the Mosaic Law. They were created clean, unclean. They were created from creation. God created clean animals and unclean animals. Y'all listening? I know you've been raised on pork chops and fat back and chitlins and hog balls and, and, and langostino and crawfish. You understand? You raised on that. But when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away. You got what I'm saying? So when you come into the knowledge, when you come into the knowledge of truth, then walk therein. You'll know the truth and the truth will do what? There's a whole, folk, a whole bunch of folk right now need to be free. You'd be surprised. <coughs> you think it's demons. Sometimes the stuff you're eating is killing you. You think it's demons, but sometimes the stuff that you're eating is affecting your soul. To the book of Prop De Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 1. One brother stop going to come real quick and read this to me. Take you Bible, Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 1. Everybody all right this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Deuteronomy is four. Romans four and four, and it says, But ye did that cleave unto the Lord your God as ye alive, every one on this day. For who I have taught you st statutes and judgments, and even the Lord God commanded me that he should do so in the land, whether you should go. In other words, like God said, like, you know, I'm giving you my word, I'm giving you my law. To put in you, amen, to be obedient. Scripture say, amen, why well, call me law, Lord, and do not the things I command, amen. In order you to obey God, you got to have the spirit of God, right? You know, because you can't obey something that you don't have, which is the spirit of God, whatever. The scripture say, like, amen, the spirit of God, the truth come, he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. And that's what my guy was saying about the uh, the health law. It was so important, amen, for you and I, amen, not only... Amen. Not to be just to hear the word. Paul said, the hearers of the word not justified, but the doers of the word. Jesus said, well, I call me Lord, Lord, and that do, they do what I tell you to do. Amen. How it's so important, amen, that, you know, once we get the health laws, amen, to apply in your life, amen. I remember, I mean, my wife, we was growing up, we was eating cracklings and pork chops and all that type of stuff. You know, I met my wife, she cooked, amen, pork beans with wieners in it, you know, and smoke sauce, you jumble out with smoke sauce. You know, all that type of stuff, you know, tastes real good. But after a while, I started even getting headaches and back aches and all that type of stuff, you know. And when we came into the, the knowledge of God's word, amen, I, you know, I had to realize that in a slow process, it didn't happen overnight, how they, you know, I had believed God. The scripture said, faith come by hearing, hearing my words alone. Once I saw the word, I had believed God's word and take God at his word and apply it to my life, amen. You know, it didn't happen overnight, but as it was a slow process, I had to go into, amen, leaving pork chops alone, even, you know, fat back, you know, and, and how they, that, that was a place in New Orleans, they still do. I mean, we were going to sad and get this big old bag of cracklings, and I get the ketchup and hot sauce bag, be all greasy and stuff, and I'm shaking it up. Like, like, you put it, like we going down the street while we're eating, amen, and we crunching and crunching and crunching. They don't even know what I'm putting poison in me. You know, felt real good. We had to go to the restroom, came out, we really, really kind of bad, you know, but, you know, we got into God's word and, you know, got into trouble, amen, I had to put away the cracklings in the bag, 
you know, pork chops and, 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 and hot links and wieners, you know, some say hog head cheese. <laughs> amen. Come on, clear for the man of God. Amen. Confession is made under salvation. <laughs> to the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 4, and begin read verse 1. Real quickly, let's do this. Those of you on the live stream, sure about that. That comes from drinking water. Say, man, first thing God makes me do in the morning when I get up, first thing he makes me do is drink a big bottle of water. And that wakes your system up. Say, man. And then you get older, you can't hold it like you used to. Say, man, when you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> Say, man, that's just the way it is. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land, which the Lord thy God, which the Lord, which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. And ye shall not add unto to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal poor. For all men, for all the men that followed Baalpora, the Lord God hath destroyed them from among you. Watch. <clears throat> but ye that did cleave unto the what? Now the word, when a man marries a woman, let him leave his mother and father. Ye that did cleave unto the Lord are what? In other words, these that you, those of you that became one that joined yourself unto him are alive. Every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. Sixth verse. Keep therefore and do them. Now, this is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm saved by grace through faith, the gift of God, not of works, not of myself, that's any man should boast. But there's, there's, there's certain things that God has given me, like in the book of Isaiah, the Bible said in the 33rd verse and 6th six, chapter, he said, the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times and the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. So the, so the, so the wisdom and, the, and knowledge shall be the, it shall be the uh, stability of the time. We're not stable, we're not strong because we don't have no wisdom, right? So here it is now, let me say, but keep six verse, Deuteronomy 4 and 6, he said, keep therefore and do them for this is your what? This is your what? It's wisdom. It's wisdom. Get wisdom and all by getting it a what? You understand? All right? If the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? So when you fear God, you get his word, you get that wisdom. This is for your wisdom and for your what? For your understanding in the sight of nations, which hear of all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What nation is there so great who have God so nigh to them? as the Lord our God and all things we call upon him for. Y'all got it? And what nation is there so great who have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you when? This day. All right? Now, you got it? So this is for your wisdom. This is for your knowledge. This, the laws and stuff is for your wisdom, for your understanding, right? Now, one thing about Brother McCoy, now, I can't make you eat it, and I can't change your attitude. If you ever... I, I, I was praying about this yesterday. If you ever get locked in on something, if you get locked in on nothing, if you get locked in on, on nothing, it's hard to unlock that person. And that's what you don't want to ever do, get locked in on something. You need, you need to get to a point where you can always hear God. No matter, what, no matter what happens to me, no matter what I go through, I have to have this. At the end of the day, I have to have this. I have to really come to my senses and say, uh-uh, no, I can't deal with that. I got to come and I got to get this. I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming to church because I got to have something to give me strength to help me breathe because I, I, that's all, if, if, if all that, I was in revival in Jacksonville, Florida. I think I told you all this uh, last Sunday. And I went through a trial, just demonic, just all kind of stuff and stuff that, that this devil was just trying to throw up about people and about just all kind of crazy stuff. 
But it just, and it started affecting me like, like the pains, the little agitations. And I got up, I sat in my prayer chair, and all of a sudden, the words start coming up out of me, you know. You know, the many may be my the afflictions of life. You know, the, he's a very present help in the time of trouble. And you know what I mean? And, and I give my angels charge over thee to keep thee in all. You know what I mean? So all this word come up in me. And as the word was coming up in me, I was getting free. I was getting like, you know, the Bible said when the enemy comes in like a what? The spirit lifts up a what? Right? You understand? Not by power, not by my, but by my what? So what happened was I, when I, when I, when I that did like that, and God just moved for me in such a way, I start really thinking about, man, how important it is to have the Holy Ghost. How important it is to have the Word of God. Think about, and I went to really feeling sorry for people that are playing with stuff and, and just entertaining stuff and just not letting the Holy Ghost, you know, really have its way because that stuff will overtake you. That stuff will overtake you. But this had not, I had the Holy Ghost. Had not, I had the standard there. And I just really went to thinking. I said, man, just think if I wouldn't have had the Holy Ghost. Just think if I wouldn't have had this word in me. You'll know the truth and the truth will do what? You see what I'm saying? So, 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 so that's why when I went to church that night, that's why I was such a great, a great anointing up under the tent because of the fight and the battles I was going through before I got there. God was sending me through so many different things, but I, then when I got there, I was, I was preaching the importance of getting the word of God. When you come here, you shouldn't waste your time. You should get what you got to get. Erase that junk. Get that mess off your mind because you got to have this. Because if them demons ever get a hold of you, see, you opening those doors, you playing with stuff right now, you think you're smart because you can, get, you, you, you can halfway control it. I used to tell somebody all the time, you're playing with them. I said, you, they, they, you let me. I said, you control them now, but after a while, you're going to lose control. And when you lose control, then you, love, you yield your members serve, You yield your members to sin. You become a servant to it. You become a slave to it. After a while, you can't come out of it. After a while, you understand you become a part of it. You understand he, beca- he controls that. That's why I can't allow stuff to stay on my mind. I can't allow what folk do to me to stay and resonate on my spirit. Because after a while, then if you do, you open up a door for demons to come in. You see what I'm saying? I'm telling you what to do. This here stuff, this ain't no accident. This is all working together for your good. You got to see it like this. They can't do nothing to you. They can only do something for you, right? You got to see that. And if you do that, weeping may, it may, it don't have to, but it may endure for a night. But joy is coming when? In the morning, not when the S-U-N arrives, but in the morning when the S-O-M, when that day star rises in your heart, when that sun arises in your spirit, then you'll get this, you understand what I mean? then you ain't got to weep. Joy is coming in the morning, but you don't see it. And if you stay in the flesh, but you open up doors and you have so many demons walk up in you, you'll be mean and cantankerous, you know, evil. I never understood sometimes why leaders are so mean and so nasty and so evil. And You understand what I mean? But what happens is they allow the people to get to their spirits. See, after Moses got around the people so long, then what, what happened, he let the people get into him. So he spoke unadvisedly, and then he smoked the rock. So all that's written for my example. I don't want I don't want to speak unadvisedly, neither do I want to smack the rock. And then I don't want to be them preached all these 40 years and get right there at the door and can't go in because I would let some some people do that but that that they gonna do get next to my spirit. You see what I mean? That these people here, they're not gonna make it in. They're not gonna make it in. And there's certain people you setting up to wasting time with that ain't that ain't going nowhere. You understand what I mean? And if you sit there and trip with them, you ain't going to go nowhere with them. So you have to come to church with that made-up mind, with that fixed-up mind. I got to have it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what? You got to have this right now. This is hope. My son, attend unto my words. Incline thine ears unto my sin. Let them not depart from thine eyes, but keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they shall be life under all that find them, and health under what? You got to have it. You got to have it. You got to have it. I'm coming every day, every time. You understand what I mean? I'm coming to get that word. You think I'm just preaching to y'all? I'm preaching to me. I'm getting this. I'm, I, sometimes I say it to remind myself. This is what I'm reminding myself. You know, you quote the same scripture. All things are working together. You quote the same. Many may be, but I'm quoting them because I'm reminding me that no matter what I'm going through, God is in total control, and everything is designed to take. You understand these, tri- these uh, light afflictions, are the, uh, uh, which are but for a moment, is working in me a far and exceeding greater way to what? Glory. So I'm reminding me. I got to constantly tell myself that, that this ain't 
ain't a devil thing. This ain't an individual thing. This ain't a people thing. This is a God thing, right? And all of this is designed to conform me into the image of his son. I'm still like, like old boy brought it out the other night when Jesus took the bread, when he asked the young man, has they got anything to feed these 5,000 people? He said, no, we don't have a two fish and five loaves of bread. The Bible said he took the bread, break the bread, and then he blessed the bread. So God going to take you, break you, and then he bless you. To the book of... <laughs> Look, somebody say, take me, take me break, me, break me, me, and bless me. Bless you ain't going to get blessed until you get broke. You forget that. All right, y'all ready? So this is your wisdom. This is your knowledge, all right? To the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 1. Watch this. Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 1. Now pay attention. Those of you in the live stream, sick, messed up, Talking about I don't believe in God. No. No. You can't keep running out there and running in front of cars and talking about God going to keep healing your leg. Say amen. You know, you can't tempt the Lord thy God. You understand what I mean? God give you instructions. God tell you what to do. I'm, I'm going to show you stuff. I'm going to give you something that's going to prevent your sickness. I'm, I'm going to give you something that's going to prevent, you know, you having problems. I'm going to give you something to prevent demons from coming to your life. I'm, I'm trying to show you don't give no place to the devil. Don't give no place to him. Don't open up a door. Don't open up an opportunity for the devil. Y'all listening? Don't open up no doors for the devil. See, you opening up doors, you giving the devil place. You allowing the devil space in your life. Here we go. Leviticus 11 and 1. Those of you in the live stream, it's a little lengthy, you understand what I mean? But this is what it is. This is what we used to do on Sabbath. From from sun from, from but we come to church to like this ten thirty in the morning. Sometimes we wouldn't get out. Some of you remember, but McCoy be teaching till six o'clock in the afternoon. Sun go down. Say man, and that's how people were growing in God. But now this little instamatic. See that's what Satan don't want us to do. He don't want us to fellowship. He don't want us to be in church no more. But see, they broke bread every day and ministered the word every day. You know what that does? If you eat every day, you know what that make you do? You're going to get full. So they were full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. So full means there ain't no room for nothing else. So they were full of faith, so there wasn't no room for doubt. Full of the Holy Ghost, so there wasn't no room for demons. And so we, now we sitting up here, go to come to church and eat once a week and stuff, and wonder why we got so many demons in our life. Wonder why we got so much unbelief and fear. You have to pay attention. And those of you in the live stream, you know, I just, work, I just appreciate God. And some of you can't find that word, you know, just, just people just preaching that word like you really need it. But thank God for the live stream. And we want to feed you as much as that live stream. Come on, you tune in. If you can't get it all, come back and just look at the rest of it. Just keep getting it. Because the more you get, the more of God you get, the more of God you become. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So if the more words you get, the more God you're going to get. Leviticus 11 and 1. And the Lord spake unto, and, and who spake? The who? Or with all capital letters, ain't it? So that lets you know I'm talking about the creator. I'm talking about the organizer. I'm talking about the sovereign God. I'm talking about the God that ain't making no mistakes. It's precise. The Lord spake unto, unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on where? On the earth, whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed, and chew of the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud, of them that divide the hoof as the camel, or that chew the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. Like, and the coney, like the, like the kangaroo and stuff like that, because he chew of the cud, but divideth not the hoof, he is unclean to you. The hare, like the rabbit, you know, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Swine, swine, we killing that swine. You know, and, and one thing about it, if you read, I'm going to show you some scriptures. The devil really make us go crazy with that pig, you know, and he make us not only, you don't just eat ham, you don't just eat like, like you know, ham or, or the chop. That devil makes you eat his tail, make you eat his feet. Make you eat his nose, make you eat his tongue, make you eat his brain, make you eat his, his skin, and then make you eat his guts. 
and then take your take his take his private part, grind it up with a bunch of stuff and make hot dogs and bologna. That's what that's what it is. His private part is hot dogs and bologna. When you give your kids hot dogs and bologna, that's what you're giving them. You're giving them the private part of a of a, of a pig. And then, then all that gristle and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? You don't even know what you're chewing on. But the devil make you go all the way live with that pork, and there's a reason for it. Here we go. You ready to have some church? All right. So the Bible said, and the swine, though he divide the hoof, and is cloven-footed, yet two of not the cud, he is what? Unclean. Now pay attention as we get ready to read this. And it said, of their flesh he shall not what? You shall not eat, and their carcass you shall not what? Don't even touch it. They are what to you? They are what to you? They are unclean, right? These shall you eat of all the beasts that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales. Now, your, what comes out of the water has to have two things, fins and scales, not fins and shell. Fins and scales. Scales is designed for the armor for the flesh. So that anything like a catfish, it can't get into the flesh. See, the catfish is the pig of the water. Catfish is the pig of the water. It's the nastiest fish you can eat. It's the nastiest fish because everything, that's why it tastes so better. Because everything go to the skin. Pig don't have like a, they don't have a circulatory system where a snake can bite them, bite them and he never die. He can turn around and eat the snake. You see what I'm saying? You know, because everything he eat go to his flesh. That's why that, that pork is, is the only type of meat you can, you can cook that you will have to season. <laughs> you ain't got to season. You can put pork chop on it and just eat that burger right off the thing. See what I'm saying? You ain't got to season no ham. You ain't got to put no, pork, you ain't got to put no salt on no ham. That ham is already salty. Everything goes to his flesh, and you don't you don't understand because there's no there's no immune there's no you understand there's no no filters. Here we go. We help you, okay? Pay attention. And these shall you eat of all that is in the waters. Ninth verse, Leviticus eleven and nine. Now I know those of you in the live stream. When whatsoever you eat, you know, uh, God say all you got to do is bless it and just hold it. Just give me a minute. Just hold it. You know, he told Peter, rise, slay, and eat, hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Don't judge no man and what they, hold it, hold it. Say amen. amen. See, I know that, I know they that gave you justification. You setting up high blood pressure. You ain't even got a scale to measure your blood pressure. Just, <laughs> just shaking and stuff. Amen. I says. And wonder why you got cysts and worms and infections and stuff and, and boils and stuff on your body. You don't even know what that is. If you was to bust a cyst on your body and put that pus, what you call pus, under a microscope, you'll see stuff wiggling and moving. Little larvae. Little undeveloped parasites. Then it come to the surface of your body, your immune system trying to push it up out your flesh. You got a cyst in your jaw. You got a cyst on your private. You got a cyst under your arm. You got Bust it. See what it smells like. It smells like a garbage can. You ever see a garbage can full of maggots? Bust a cyst and see what it smells like. It smells just like a garbage can full of maggots. Because it is. It's, a, it's, 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 a, it's the same thing as maggots. Larvae. Here it is. Watch well, this, all right. One thing about bubble cup. I'm gonna go. I, I, I used to preach this. I preached this 30 some odd years ago. Folks said I was crazy. Said I was crazy. They said I lost my mind. Don't look like I lost it, do it. Don't look like I lost it. Here we go. Man, I get sick just like you get sick. It don't last. No last. That immune system will take right all over because I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't putting no involuntary stuff in my body. I ain't putting a bunch of stuff that ain't got no business being in there. So my immune system ain't got to fight that. It fight what's, what's, what's in, what I don't want in there. So your immune system is overworked. Look at all that stuff your, your immune system got to fight. In a bag of skins for you got the church. Watch this here.
And the Bible said these words. Now watch the tenth verse again, okay? Let's do the ninth verse. And these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that have not, now watch this, we're going to do something. I'm going to read something all the way to the 23rd verse. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the waters of all that move in the waters and of anything which is in the waters, they shall be, and, and, and what? They shall, now remember that word, abomination. Remember that word, okay? They shall be an abomination where? And, and they shall even be an abomination unto you. 11th verse. And ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses in what? And whatsoever have no fins, no scales in the waters, that shall be what? Abomination unto you. And, what's, and, these are, and these are they which ye shall have an abomination of among the fowls. They shall not be eaten, but they what? Now, you done heard abomination almost, almost one, two, three, four, five, six, six times. The, the eagle, the ostrich, 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 the osprey, like, like, like the ostrich and, you know, all these, like, them little, you know, all them birds, you know, walking on two feet, stuff like, you know, all that stuff like that. I don't care how that pretty that swan is. He ain't clean. The ostrich, the vulture, the kite. After his kind, every raven after his kind, the owl, the night hawk, the cuckoo, cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, the little owl, the camarant, the great owl, the swan, the pelican, the gear eagle, the stork, the heron, the after his kind, the lap wing, and the what? And the bat, all fowls that creep. Going on up on all fours shall be what? Abominable. Abominable. You shall she shall not make your what? You shall but these these may ye eat of the of every flying creeping thing that goeth upon all fours, which have legs above their, their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat. The locust, John the Baptist ate locusts and wild honey, grasshoppers. Grasshoppers is a delicacy. Turkey is like a bird. It, 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 don't, it doesn't say like a turkey. Chicken, but they, they eat scavengers. I mean, you know, it's just like, but it didn't say them, you know. Uh, but um, anyway, locust after its kind, the beetle after its kind, the grasshopper of this kind, and all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination where? Now watch. And, and for these shall be unclean, and whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be what? Unclean until evening. Now watch. I'm going to show you something in the book of Leviticus, chapter 20. Chapter 20. Uh... 20, 20, verse 25. Please, please pay attention. Let me be out of your way in just a minute, okay? Leviticus chapter 20, verse 25. Ye shall therefore put a difference between the what? Now, this is now this ain't for everybody. This is for the chosen. This is for only his children. My sheep know my, and a stranger they're not going to what? It ain't for everybody. Do you know how many folk is not going to make heaven? And I know you want to put everybody in heaven, but I mean, I, I, I didn't make the rules. I didn't make the rules. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, right? He that believeth and, 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 and baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be what? So the unbeliever is not going to enter in, right? The Bible said they could not enter in because of their what? Well, really, if you look at the word unbelief, it merely means it's faith. You know, faith, that faith, opposite of faith is unbelief, right? But look at, look at, really look at the word unbelief. You know what it is? Disobedience. Disobedience. You understand? The just shall live by what? Look up the, go home and look up the word just. It means the obedient, those that are right, those that are doing what, he te what he's telling them to do. You're not, you, you're going to live by faith. The only way you're going to live by faith, you got to obey what he said. Faith coming by what? By hearing and by hearing the word of the Lord. If you're going to hear it and don't obey it, you, you understand what I mean? Faith without works is what? It's obedience. 
Here it is. And ye shall, ye, ye shall therefore put a difference, that's Leviticus 20 and 25. You shall put a difference between the clean beast and the unclean beast, between the un, unclean fowls and the clean, and you shall not make your what? Wait a minute, you shall not make your what? Read it, make, not make your souls what? Abominable, abominable, shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any, any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as what? She said, be ye what? Be ye what? Be ye holy for I, the Lord, am holy and, and have severed you. Look, somebody said severed you. Cut you off from other people that you should be mine. I've severed you. I didn't just separate you. I cut it. I, I put a split. See, we're going to be different. They told you to be holy, right? Tell me what holy is. See, he told you to be holy. Why would God ever tell you to be something you don't know what it is? He said, be ye holy, for I'm holy, right? I've separated you. I want you to be holy, right? Can I talk, tell you what holy is right quick? I'm going to just go to the Bible because you don't want to believe that I say, you know, just say, he just talking. I'm going to just tell you what the Bible said. You, you can argue with the word, okay? Go holy. Romans 7, Romans 7 and, tw and uh, 14, I believe it is. Just hold it. We're going to keep moving. I'm going to move in the old books of the Bible. We're going to get to the new books. We're going to get to Peter. We're going to get to I bless everything I bless is sanctified. We're going to get to that in just a minute. But I got to lay the foundation. I got to show you the truth. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You got it? You ready for it? Here it is, Romans 7. Make it 7 and 12. Y'all ready? Roman, you want to be holy? Anybody want to be holy? Yes. Well, this is what holiness is. He said, wherefore the law is what? Holy. The law is what? Holy. Well, this is in Romans. This is Paul. This is the same Paul that said, you understand, that you're trying to use it. It said the law been done away with. I proved to you all through this Bible that Paul wasn't trying to tell the folk that they didn't have to keep the law. He was trying to tell the folks in order to be saved, you don't have to keep the law because, see, by, 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 the, by the law, no flesh is justified, but we get our knowledge of sin from the law. So I'm not justified by the works of the law. I'm, I'm justified by, 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 by grace through faith. You understand? But once I get saved, I become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things become new. Shall I continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall they that are dead to sin live any longer than in? Know ye not? As so many of us who were baptized into his death shall be also raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Romans 6, right? So it ought to be a difference, right? You understand what I mean? I cannot continue in sin. Whosoever Whoever yields his members to sin will become a servant to sin, right? You understand? The devil sent it from the beginning for this purpose with the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Bible said if any man walk, uh, abide in Christ, he himself ought to even walk as Christ walked. Christ wasn't a sinner. He was a man that did no sin, neither was the gal found in his mouth, right? So you ought to walk as he walked. He left you an example that you should follow his footsteps. Is that right? All right? So he left us an example, right? You understand? He was a sacrificial lamb, but he was an un, un, unspotted, unblemished sacrificial lamb, right? So we're in Christ, right? The Bible said, if I, we know that in him is no sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans 8 and 1. Who, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. Well, you can't condemn an innocent man if I'm in Christ like I'm supposed to be. If I'm in Christ like I'm supposed to be, First John chapter, chapter 4, I mean chapter 3, I believe it is verse 5, in him is no sin. There's no sin in him. So if I stay in him, I'm not going to sin. By this we hear, thereby we know the, 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 the children of God and the children of, of the devil. You understand? He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. But he that sinneth is of the devil. He that sinneth, he that keeps sinning is of the devil. So they keep on sinning. Let them preach and make you feel like you keep on sinning. That's of the devil. You got what I'm saying? That's of the devil. Now pay attention, all right? Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment is what? Holy, just, and what? Holy, just, and what? Holy, just, and what? And good. So you're telling me to be holy, so then I should have some instruction on being holy. 
The law is holy. The commandment is holy, just and good. So don't make your soul abominable. There's, there's certain things, there's certain things, uh, uh, there, there's certain things that you can eat that can affect your soul. The Bible said in the book of Revelation that, 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 that the fearful and the unbelievable and the abominable. How many is abominable right now? And I know you don't want to hear this kind of stuff. I mean, to the book of, to the book of, uh, uh, of, of uh, I know you don't want to hear about your favorite foods, you know what I'm saying? You know, do you have to understand, I was raised on fat bag chitlins and hog maws and, and pig tail and pig feet, pig ears. And I was raised on that. I was raised on shrimp and with the little black thing down in the, going down the middle. And I'm just thinking this part of the shrimp didn't know it was his intestines. I'm raised on it. I'm raised on the little crabs. And, and, and you know, back where, where I'm from, they got surf and turf. Y'all don't hear me. You know, we surf and turf. You know what that mean? You know, surf is the lobster. Turf is the, is the beef. Where I'm from is surf and turf. We got that black Angus beef out there in Colorado, right? So you eat the surf and the turf. So you eat the lobster with the beef. I'm raised like that. I'm raised like that. So but when you come into the knowledge of the truth, then you walk that in. When God opened my eyes up to the word, I don't care if Uncle Cud and Neil, Grandmama and them, I don't care how much they ate it. When God opened my eyes up, now watch. I'm going to show you something in just a minute. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Now, if little Steve, you call little Steve in the, in, in, in the bathroom smoking a cigarette, you'd whoop him with him. If you call little Rose somewhere, sitting up there smoking some crack, you'd be, try to beat her half crazy, right? Now, why would you beat him for smoking a cigarette and beat up for smoking crack? When ain't no way in the scripture to say that cigarettes is wrong and crack is wrong. The only thing that lets us know that it's wrong because it defiles the temple, and he that defiles the temple of God, him will God destroy, right? So now you'll beat them for smoking a cigarette, but you won't beat them for something. A cigarette, they can go to the detox center and get it. In a few days, they can get nicotine out their system. But pork will be in your system, and all them worms will be in the parasites will be in your body until the day you die. So you give them fat back and chitlins and hot dogs and all that, that crab and stuff like that, but then you'll sit up there and beat them because they're smoking a cigarette. Because the cigarette said it causes cancer. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this here causes your soul to be a bomb, but which one you want. To the book of Isaiah 66, verse, verse 15. i tell you what you do. You can get it better than that. Go to, go to, go to Isaiah Go to Isaiah 65 <clears throat> and verse 1. Quickly, let's do this real quick. We've got to get out of here. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I am sought of them that ask for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that called not upon my name, that, that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all day unto a what? rebellious people which walketh in a way that is not what? Which walketh in a way that is not what? After their own what? Thoughts. And people that provoke me to anger continually to my face. They sacrifice in gardens, burn incense upon altars of brick, which remaineth in graves and large and monuments, which, 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 these are people that make me angry. These are people that, that, that walk in rebellion, that eat what? Swine's that eat swine's flesh, the abrama, the and the broth of the clams child, I'm, excuse me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to tell you. Gumbo, this is the broth. I sat up there and went to a little restaurant, I ain't going to name the name, down in New Orleans. And everybody was talking about the gumbo. And I, I, that first time, you know, I'm, so I'm, I'm going to go down there. So a partner of mine, he ordered some gumbo. So I was getting to order me some, and I was going to wait to see what his was. They brought that, that gumbo to that man, and a fish head come up from the bottom up to the top. A fish head? In the gumbo? 
and he was supposed to take that with the with the fish head and pour it on the rice. No, 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 no. This is a popular. I could I could I could name the name. That's a popular restaurant in New Orleans. And I'm not lying. I'm just no agitation. It had some feet, fish, chicken feet. All this was in it. That real gumbo got that stuff in it. Y'all from New Orleans looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all know, but they put everything in that gumbo. Little midget pop up at their chest. <laughs> That fish head come up out that gumbo, man. That messed me up. I said, no gumbo for me. I don't even want to eat gum. You don't even see me chew gum. <laughs> Say, man. But watch this. Y'all ready for it? So they, they provoke him eating swine's flesh and abominable, and, and the broth of abominable things in their what? In their vessels. You don't like that one? Go to the 66, 66 chapter and the 15th verse. The Bible said, he said, Behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with his fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst of eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. I didn't write that. I didn't write that. I didn't write that. I didn't write that. But see this folk right now, they, they can't get they can't get with Brother McCoy. They think I'm pretty they, they think I'm just trying to throw up this religion. This is your health right now in an hour like this. I would like there's all these viruses around and you putting something in your body that's making your immune system have to work on something you voluntarily put in and you wonder why you can't get kick off a common cold. You wonder why you can't get rid of a common cold. You wonder why every time you look around you got something going wrong in your body. You have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. Pay attention. It's not just going in your body. What's going in your mind? What's going in your mind? What's on your mind that ain't got no business being on your mind? What's on your mind? What's what's on your what's in your heart? You understand? Keep that heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. What's in your heart? What is this word that you walk in it? What's in your heart? What you thinking about that got you so messed up, got you so stressed out that your body's all out of rhythm? All of this is fed. This not, not just in the natural. You can eat stuff in the spiritual. You can eat the wrong thing in the spirit. It'll knock your physical body off whack. Like he just said, you can eat something in the natural, knock your spirit off whack. Don't 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 make your soul abominable by eating unclean things. So if you can take something natural and eat something and mess your spirit up, you can eat something spiritual and mess your natural up. Folks sitting up there, you mess around. Somebody be to say something about you. You know, mess your mind. You get so angry, you be just nervous and sick, headaches. And just take your strength from you. You be wanting to go somewhere. I ain't going nowhere. I don't feel like going nowhere. What made you not feel like going nowhere because of you? Because of what you heard somebody say. What made you feel like not going somewhere because of? Do you understand? Because that's how powerful it is that, that spirits can affect, the abominable stuff can affect your, 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 your soulless man. It can affect your natural man. That's, that's words and spirits and stuff. If you let that jump, it affect your, your natural man. Somebody can say something to you and you can get, get angry. And you know what, that, you know what anger does? Anger stri- hits your stress and, 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 and your heart go to moving. It makes your blood pressure go up. There's folk that got angry. They had to rush them to the doctor. Because that, that something spiritual affected them naturally. Here we go. Am I helping anybody? All right. To the book of Psalms. Let's do Proverbs real quick. Let me read this. 4 and 20. We'll be out of right? We just do this Sabbath like I used to do. We just have Sabbath Lift off and go home. Go visit the old folks' home. 
go pray to somebody. Go home and just empty your, t- t- take the time and empty your ice box and deep freeze this out. <laughs> Proverbs. <laughs> Proverbs chapter chapter four verse twenty. Now pay attention, I'm getting ready, I'm gonna be coming in. Those of you on the live stream, I'm gonna break this thing down to you in just a minute, okay? They think Christ come to just free us from the law. I'm gonna tell you he is the law. He is the law. He's the truth. He's the law. He's the thing that's gonna rebuke reprove the world of sin. He's the law. He's the lawgiver. Y'all got to listen to me. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words and climb thine ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes, but keep them in the midst of thy what? Keep them in the midst of thy what? Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they shall be what? They shall be what? Keep this word, for it shall be what? Life unto all that find them. That's life, right? And then what else? And health unto where? Health unto where? Now watch this, health unto all their flesh. Now, so if that's the case, if that's the case, what goes in my heart affects my life and my health. If that's the case, what uh, what goes in my heart affects my life and my health, then the next verse said, I need to keep thy heart with all what? Keep me protected, guarded. Watch what goes inside your head. Watch what goes in your ears. Watch what you set up and look at. Watch the stuff that you look at. Because it affects the way you, you understand? That stuff will mess your life up. You got what I'm talking about? Keep that heart with all diligence, for out of it are the what? The issues of life. That's why we got so many issues because of what comes out of your heart from the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks, right? You got what I'm saying? So what's in your heart, you understand? When you got God in your heart, then what's going to come out your mouth is God. And what you're going to get is God. Is that right? Uh, to the book of Psalms, 107 verse 20. Now watch this. Get that word, love you. Get that word. Got to get that word. You ready for it? But pay attention. Now you grown person, you grown man. I ain't gonna turn there and tell you, tell you what to throw out your house. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Go, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go in your house. And, 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 and I'm just telling you. You know, when you see the truth, walk therein. You walk. You see the light. Walk with the light. While you walking with the light, agree with the light, and you become the children of the light. You take on it, we just sick, we, we grow up being children sick. But they were feeding us sick stuff. We sick and they feeding us sick. We sick, we set up sneezing and coughing and they didn't give us a bologna sandwich. With mayonnaise. Or uh, uh, salad dressing. Egg yolk, egg yolks and grease. They feeding us grease. And, 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 and swine. You understand what I mean? And then to calm you down, they give you a lollipop. Full of sickness, messed up. Your immune system is all out of whack. You got what I'm saying? Y'all listening to me? Here we go. Here we go. Psalms 107 and uh, Psalms 107 and verse 20. And then we're going right into the New Testament for those of you in the live stream. And I know some you got some, some people just, you know, those of you been listening to me, you know, Brother McCoy, I ain't crazy. I've been preaching this stuff for 30-something years. I mean, you can look at me. You understand? You can tell. You understand what I'm preaching. I mean, like, like I said, just people just, I don't see how you do it, how you preach eight days, how you do this and how you do that. I'm telling you, it's not just because of the way I eat. That's one thing, but it's the way I think. I don't let stuff stay in my heart. I don't let stuff, I don't, I don't stay mean and nasty with people and evil with people. I don't keep unforgiveness and bitterness in my heart. You understand what I mean? You know, I, some, some, sometimes I have to walk careful, careful around people, but I don't keep stuff in my heart. I don't keep stuff. That's why a lot of times when people see me loving people, that don't mean that we running together no more. See? That don't mean we running together, you know, but my job is to love you. And whenever you see me, I'm going to give you love. But, but that don't mean we can run together because two can't walk together except they what? You see what I mean? So because sometimes people get it twisted and they think because I'm loving a person or, you know, or, or, or there for a person, they think that we running together. That don't mean we, we in cahoots. That don't mean we in cahoots. Don't get that junk twisted. Don't get that twisted. You watch Brother McCoy. You see Brother McCoy. Brother McCoy, I don't hang around a bunch of folk. 
I love everybody. And that's my that's what I do. I, yeah, but I ain't gonna keep nothing, I ain't gonna keep no hold no grudges. I ain't gonna be sitting around holding stuff in my heart for the rest of my life and you know, that that distrust and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's it's a lot of things I don't trust, you know, because I, I don't trust certain things because like uh it because it, it, sometimes you, it's hard to trust what don't trust. Amen. Did you catch me? Yes, it's hard to trust what don't trust. If I know you don't trust me, then I can't really trust you because I don't know what you're going to do. See, people that don't trust, they're liable to do anything just thinking you're going to do something. You listening to me? You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't follow nobody you don't trust. You can't learn from nobody you don't respect. So if you don't trust, you know, we're in the street. We, we know that on the street. I can't hang around you and you don't trust me. We see one of the, that's, where, that's where back then we was loyal. We was loyal. We was like loyal. And that's what made us be able to just do what we did because we was loyal to one another. See, it used to be honor among thieves. You know what I'm saying? There's no honor no more. There's no loyalty. I mean, you know, you get a book of running with your enemy nowadays, friends with your enemy nowadays. And all up in your face smiling. They talking about you, talking about the person like a dog, and you sitting up there just on the telephone with, her, like it don't affect you. You got to be real careful. But listen, you earth, and one thing about the earth, I don't care how strong that earth is. It's it's it's, it's, it's maybe earthquakes, maybe take a claw of it, hit somebody in the head and kill them. You understand what I mean? But that earth got a weakness to it. You know what that weakness is? You put a seed inside of it, and it can't stop it from earth can't stop it from growing. So you have to understand, don't make no difference how strong you think you are. You set around a bunch of seeds, that junk going to get in your spirit. That stuff will get in your spirit, and that stuff going to grow. And then you, anytime something come up, like old, old brother said, you know, a lot of times people, they, they, they talk about, uh, uh, I'm leaving. You know, I'm going to leave the church. The Lord spoke to me and told me, said, I'm getting ready to give folk a bunch of excuses. They want excuses, I'm getting ready to give it. He said, a lot of people have left in their mind, but their feet ain't moved yet. I said a lot of people have left the church in their mind or left the movement in their mind. Their feet ain't moved yet. They gone already. It don't take but a minute. It's a little nudge. They go. They been gone. See, it takes loyalty. It takes commitment. But I love everybody. You got to keep that in your heart. And no matter what goes down, you know, like I tell people, I can't be friends with your enemy and be totally committed to you. In the streets, in the streets, how many, how many come out the streets in here? Raise your hand. One, two, three. Come out the streets. Don't you know, don't you know that you can't be friends with my enemy? There's a person, the night I got saved, I was on my way to do something. And the reason I was on my way to take this individual's life was because they was friends. With, they, were be, they were with me. They knew all of my stash houses, all the cut houses. They knew, they knew everything we was doing, but they was, they was connecting with a rival drug dealer, but wanting to be with me. But I know you were a rival drug dealer, and I know you got all this information, so I can't let you live being friends with my enemy. You understand how I go? And then we get saved, and we think the principle changed. If you, Jesus said, if you're with me, you can't be against me. You ever hear me? I ain't, I ain't against you, but I ain't for you either. Is that crazy? I ain't against you, neither am I for you. Well, if you if you ain't if you ain't for me, you against me. You got what I'm saying? But we, now we want to be friends with the enemy. We want to sit around and communicate with a bunch of enemies, and, and see enemies are slicker than your mind. They may not mention a name, but they they can sow seeds like that. You're gonna be committed to something. But McCoy trying to choose your friends. No, I'm trying to choose your loyalty. I'm trying to keep you focused. That's why you can't go nowhere. You can't go nowhere split. If half of you going this way and half of you going this way, guess where you going? Nowhere. Wonder why your life ain't going nowhere because you ain't focused. Watch Bob McCoy. Bob McCoy ain't, I don't care about that. It's just like this. 
I ain't trying to choose your friend. Jesus told you you got to leave your mama and your daddy. Jesus told you, Abraham, come out from among your kids. You want to be with me? You got to let that go. You got to let whatever got influence on your life more important. That is more important to me. You got to let it go. You got to follow me. You got to follow me with your whole. You got to love me with your whole mind, your body, your soul. You got to be. You got to be committed. See, folks get mad with me. Don't get mad with me because you ain't going nowhere. Get committed. Get focused. Get focused. Get focused. You can't keep splitting your life. Like I tell you, if you got this, you over here and you over here. You understand? How long will you what between two opinions? How long will you what between two opinions? You know what halt mean? Stop. If, if somebody pulling you this way, somebody pulling you this way, where do you think you're going? Nowhere. And they get mad because you ain't going nowhere. My ministry ain't going nowhere. My anointing ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You won't let something go. Let something go. Make, make your mind up. You understand? If you're going to go, you got to go either to the left or you got to go to the right. You can't go in between. You're going to stop. I done seen so many people's lives, ministries, anointings come to an abrupt stop because they can't make a decision. You're going to sell out, sell out. Be a soldier. Be a soldier. Be a S-O-L-D-R. Sell out. See what I'm preaching right here? You got to be a soldier. This got to be in your heart. This got, these are rules and regulations. He's telling me, I don't, I don't want to live in any kind of vessel. I don't want you pouring alcohol, cigarettes. I don't want you pouring no unclean stuff on me. I want to live in a holy vessel. I want, I want a body that, that, that I can operate in. Y'all not listening to me. Here we go. <laughs> it's quiet up in here. Why so quiet? You gonna talk about betrayal and double mind and two faced because quiet. Say amen. amen. <laughs> watch your life. Watch your life. Watch your life when you get like that. You can't go nowhere. And you get bitter. You get bitter because see, one side is gonna take you one way, another side is gonna take you another way, and after a while. You start feeling the fight. You start feeling the toil. You see what I'm saying? If you go, if somebody holding you to the left, right, and somebody holding you to the right, but the one on the right, on the right, wants you to be with them, right, and the one on the left wants you to be with them. So they put it over here. They put it over here. They put it over here, right? Guess what you get? Let somebody keep pulling on you in both directions. And see what kind of attitude you gonna have. Your attitude, because that's painful. Your attitude gonna get bad. You see what I'm saying? Your attitude going to get bad. And that's how come so many people get disposition in man. Because your, your mind ain't made up. You're going to go in the tour. You're going to go in somewhere. Go all the way in. Go all the way. See me? It don't make no difference who be up in here. It don't make no difference who come. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not, this way, I'm, 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 I believe this. I teach this. I believe in the commandments of God. I believe in holiness. I believe that a woman ought to wear that to pertain to a woman, and a man ought to wear that to pertain to a man. I don't care who come up in here with spandex on or pants on their head. It don't make no difference. I still believe what the Word of God say. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to veer to the left nor to the right because of, of friendship. I told God, going over to this other church, I said, you know how I am? Don't put me in a position where I got to compromise. It don't make no difference. I'm not changing. This is why this is why trouble and Zion has been just like it is. You got some come, some go, but still gonna be just like it is. Jesus, now watch. Jesus, when, when the children of Israel came up out of Egypt land, it was two million, two million, almost two million Jews, right? But by the time they got over into the promised land, it wasn't but two families out of the original. By the time he get, you get finished coming through the sifting, it wasn't but two families, Joshua and Caleb and his family and their families of the original. Everything was 20 years and under, right? Jesus was preaching. And he, he, the, the, the Bible said there was over 5,000 men alone, not including the women and the children. Now, when you think of 5,000 men, you got to think three to four times that much, right? So you're looking at almost 30, 35,000 people following him, right? Right? But by the time he got finished preaching and ministering and taking them down this road, right, wasn't but 120 made it to the upper room. Many are called, but few are what? See, and this is what the, this is what the deal is. Everybody ain't going, but one thing about it, did you ever see him change? 
And because he didn't change, because he didn't change, that's what made the difference. That's what people began to fall off because he never changed. He looked at him as he was going. He said, will you go? Will you also go? Peter and John looked at one another and said, Where, whither shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. You see? When but 120 out of all them thousands and thousands of people, you understand, they made it to the upper room. That's saying something. That's saying something. You got to be a soldier in this. You got to be, listen, all this stuff you, you got to go through and all this stuff you got to take. You got to be a soldier. You got to be sold out, you understand, for, for folk that do stuff and you got to come back and love them. You got to be a soldier for folk that dog you and, and folk that abuse you and you come back and you be there for them. You got to be a soldier. You got to be a soldier to overcome evil with good, to render good for evil. You got to be a soldier to love your enemy and do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you. You got to be a soldier to feed your enemy if he's hungry, to give him something to drink if he's thirsty. You got to be a soldier to get place to rap. You got to be a soldier. You got to be sold out to God and know that God is in total control to not take matters in your own hand. To realize you got to be a soldier to not fight and become vindictive and to realize that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, you got to be a soldier to go somewhere and stay when folk are talking about you, lying on you, and, and, and falsely accusing you, all this stuff. And you got to be a soldier to sit there and take it until God moves you. If God sent you there, you got to stay there until, until the trial is over. Because if you leave, you ain't seen a trial. If you leave and God don't tell you to leave, you ain't seen a trial. You ain't seen a trial. God will put you in a position. God will put you in something. When he tell you to leave, that's when it's time to go. And don't look back. You see? But if God tell you to go somewhere and you go there, and while you're there, you getting all kind of opposition, folk lying on you, folk doing stuff to you, folk hurting you, folk disappointing you, and you jump up and leave because you think you can't take it no more. You have to understand, no matter what they do to you, God ain't going to allow you to be tempted, tested, try about that which you're able. So whatever you're going through is a part of your confirmation into the, into the image of his son. Like I told you, he took them, he broke them, and then he blessed them. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to take you, break you, and then he's going to bless you. But he ain't going to bless you until you break you. That's what he did to the children of Israel. He took them through the wilderness. What for? To break them. That was a part of it. To break them. That was what? To 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 uh, 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 to humble them. To prove them. To see what was to see whether or not they keep his commandments, and to make them to know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. How many folk making it? You be here tomorrow. I guarantee you. Those of you on the live stream, I hope you tune in on tomorrow. It's going to be a word up in here tomorrow. See, people playing with God. Folk, right now, man, you look at folk, man, fall on the wayside. You know, playing with that, playing with that word. You come to work, come to church, come to church to complain. Come to church to mama. Come to church to be looking. I ain't coming to church for nothing but to get, get to eat. I got to eat, and I'm eating because I need strength. I don't know about you. I don't care. I'm coming to church because I need some strength. And I ain't letting you stop me. Because I know, I know I got a Goliath, I got the face, I got an Esau I got to deal with. You understand me? And I need strength. Strengthen me. The Bible said that the Lord is the saving strength of his anointed. They that do know that God shall be what? You understand? Be strong in the Lord and the power of his what? Y'all don't hear me what I'm saying. So when I put on the whole armor, the whole armor is for my protection. The whole armor, if you look at it, helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, gird them with your loins about with truth, shod in your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take unto you the shield of faith and the sword, which is the word of God. All of it, word, salvation, confession is made, word, breastplate, you understand, of righteousness. Righteousness was imputed unto him because of his faith. Faith coming by hearing, by hearing the word, right? The Lord be going by with truth, right? Word, feed shall with the gospel, word, shield, faith, word, sword, word. In other words, put that word on, that's your strength. So I got to have this to be able to combat against that. If I don't have that, I'd be meaning the dog. All the stuff that people have done to me, I'd be in the penitentiary. No, you're laughing, this is no joke. 
people that did stuff to me physically, uh, emotionally, and, and stuff, I'd be in the penitentiary. But because of the word of God, this is my struggle. I don't see how he could take it. I don't see how he deal with all this. Because of the word of God, they that, are, they that do know that God shall be strong and do exploits. You walk in his word and you do what God said. He said right here in the 20th verse, Psalms 107 and verse 20, he sent his word and what? He sent his word and what? Healed them and delivered them out of all their what? And he sent his word. Now, he didn't just, just, just say be healed. He sent all instructions. He sends instructions. If you walk in the instructions, you will have life and help to all your flesh. I'm sending you a word. Now, those of you in the live stream, we're going straight into the word of God. Matthew chapter, chapter 5, verse 17. Real quick. Come on, let's do this. I'll be out of your way in just a minute. Am I helping anybody? Yeah. Anybody learning anything? Yeah. You can sit there if you want to. One thing about Brother McCoy, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Ain't nobody did nothing to me. I used to think they did. But ain't nobody did nothing to me. I'm on a journey. I'm on a predestinated journey. And everything the folk did to me was from me. To conform me into the image of his son. He wants somebody to have long suffering, to have patience, to have meekness, to have tenderness. You understand me? Gentleness. He wants somebody with the, with the fruit of the spirit. He wants his son. And so he's going to set up there, he's going to mold you, make you, break you, shape you until you can get to the point that you can be like his son and be able to look at your worst enemy and say, Father, forgive him. I want, I want you, I want, I want, I'm, Lord spoke to me one day, he said, I'll check your, I'll check your prayer list, son. He said, your prayer list lets me know, let me know you're growing. He said, your prayer list lets me know when you're growing. Your prayer list lets me know when, when I can see on your prayer list your worst enemy, your worst agitated irritator. When I can see on your prayer list, Lord, bless them, Lord, move for them. Touch them, Lord. Bring them out. Touch them, God. They don't want to be like this. When I can look on your prayer list and see who you're praying for, let me know if you're growing or not. Or you're on your curse list. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, if you got the same man. Think not, this is, this is God in Christ. Think not that I come to do what? Destroy the law or the prophets. I had somebody tell me, well, we ain't under the Old Testament. We ain't, we ain't up under the Old Testament. That, 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 we under the New Testament. I said, well, then the Lord ain't your shepherd no more. You ain't the head nor the tail no more. You ain't blessed coming in, blessed going out no more. All that no weapon, that ain't for you. That no weapon formed against me going, that ain't for you. That ain't the Lord is my light. That ain't for you. That ain't for you. Step out of that. Thousands shall fall by my right hand. No, 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 no. You ain't under that. You don't fool with that. See what I'm saying? These are people be dissecting that word, be setting up there, chopping that word up. Malachi said they're partial in the law. They only take the law that, 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 that suffices them. But that other part that caused their flesh to have to die, they don't want that. No, that's been done away with. That's been done away with. You don't want to give up them chitlins and hard balls and that poor child. That's been done away with. You want to go to the flea market in the mall on Sabbath? That's been done away with. You know what I'm saying? I mean, anything that you don't want to interfere with your fleshly desires and your, you understand what I'm saying? It's got to be done away with. And you just do away with. You just take commandments off them. Just take them. Just, just erase them. That don't mean that's, a, that's done away with. We don't have to do that. Who gave you the right? Where was you at? So think not that I come to destroy the law of the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to what? To fulfill. 18 verse. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth, what? Pass. Not one jot, that's the dot of an hour, or one tittle, that's the cross of a T, shall any wise pass from the law, to all be what? All be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these commandments. Y'all listening? shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so. He shall be called what? Wait a minute, now you teach it. You, now wait a minute, watch, watch. Whosoever shall, therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men. They teaching men. Shall be called what? Least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be great in the what? In the kingdom of heaven. You telling me you, now, this is God in Christ? Watch this. 
Y'all ready for it? To the book of Acts, chapter 10. Where God told Peter, rise, Peter, slay and eat. And we're going to get right down to it. It's going to take me but a few minutes. Now, I ain't got but, I ain't got but, but really four more scriptures to read. You know the truth, and the truth will make you free. In Genesis, in Genesis 7 and 1, he created them clean and unclean. That's before the Mosaic law ever came into attack, right? They were clean beasts and unclean beasts. In the book of Genesis 7 and 1, right? That's, that's before the flood. You got what I'm talking about? Right? So they were created clean and unclean. Repeat that after they say created, created. Clean, clean, and unclean. Say it again. Created, created clean, clean, and unclean. To the book of Acts, chapter 10. 10. And see, there's people that's coming into the knowledge of this stuff, but they're taking it to another step. You got these people with this Yahweh, and you got these people all in this black stuff. You know, it's one thing to come into the knowledge of it, but I ain't losing Jesus. See, I ain't going off into that. You see what I mean? They're they coming into the, you know, women that divine order and hair cover, but then they, now they're trying to do away with Jesus. But I don't want to get truth and lose truth. <laughs> you see what I mean? I ain't trying to get truth and lose truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I ain't trying to get truth and lose truth. Here it is, Acts 10, and begin reading on the, in the ninth verse. Pay attention. And on the Mars, they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour and became very hungry and would have eaten and while he and while they made ready he fell into a what trance now trance is not a sleep but it's kind of like a vision sleep you know like you go off you sleep but it's a trance where you you're seeing a vision right anybody know what i'm talking about you're not you you're really not sleep but you sleep but it's like a trance. You got what I'm saying? And the Bible said, I, and, 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 um, and the Bible said, he, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descended unto him as it, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Now pay attention. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now pay attention, those of you on the live stream. They use the scripture to justify eating unclean meats. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, now this is the Peter that walked with Jesus. This is the Peter. Now, they followed him. They followed Jesus. They imitated him so to the point that the only way that Judas could t to tell the difference, he said, the one I kissed, this is him, because they dress like him, they walk like him, they talk like him. When Peter and John then was preaching after, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they took them in, they said, they, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant. They, 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 were, they were unlearned, but they perceived that they had been with Jesus. How did they perceive that? No, you're one of Jesus' disciples. How come? Your speech betrayed. They did everything Jesus done. So if Jesus was saying that it's not that that goes in a man that defiles him, but that which comes out, you understand? You, you see what I mean? And that, that he was saying, but that, 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 that what goes in and don't defile him. He has to understand the words that I'm speaking to you as spirit. You see, what defiles a man is the spirit. You understand? That's what defiles the soul. But I'm still, I'm not giving you a license to eat unclean meat. Because if Jesus ate unclean meat, so did his disciples. Because they did what? They followed him. Follow come from the Greek word mimetes, which means to imitate, to copy, cattle, to become like. Right? So here's Peter. Now, once again, did I explain that to you? Here's Peter once again. Now, the, the sheep got all kind of animals in it. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Fourteen verse. But Peter said, not so, Lord. For I have, I have, what you following Jesus? Jesus ate fat back. You followed him. Jesus didn't eat that. He was the law. Jesus was the word made flesh. He was a man that did no sin, neither was the guy found where. It was 
never, I have never eaten anything that is what? Common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. Pay attention. This was done thrice, three times, and the vessel was received up, up again into heaven. Watch the 17th verse. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean. I know God ain't telling me to eat unclean meats. So what does it Now, while Peter doubted, the Bible said, the men which were sent from Cornelius. Now, Cornelius was a Roman, uh, was of the Italian band, which was considered to be unclean. Anything that wasn't a Jew was considered a dog, unclean, right? From an angel that appeared on Cornelius and told him in the early part of the 10th tenth, tenth chapter and told him to send to one, to, 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 to one, to Joppa for one Simon. You know, to come and preach to him the words of eternal life. And, and, and he said, the 17th verse, Now Peter doubted in himself what his vision, which he had seen should mean. Behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate and, and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the, on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men, now the Spirit spoke, now, now he ain't in no trance now. Spirit spoke and said, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting. Now these are these are these are these are not Jewish people. So these are unclean people. These are considered dogs. These are right? He said, Doubting nothing. Go with them, doubting nothing, right? He said, For I have sent them. Then Peter went down to them, which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom thou whom ye see. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, one that feared God and of, and of a good report among the nations of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel, by a holy angel to send unto thee into this house and to hear the words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and, and called and had called together his kinsmen and near friends, and Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with them, he went in and found many that were come together. Watch, 28th verse. And he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come in unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any swine in So God didn't come to die for the pork. He got come to die to clean up man. But I showed him the vision. Y'all know him, and he doubted what does it mean? Because they were considered unclean animals. Called them snakes. Called them generation of vipers. Called them dogs. Right? They don't eat that. So he said, don't call no man common or unclean. So that wasn't telling Peter to eat no eat no pork. It was given of a vision that God, what God has cleansed, man, call not that common, unclean. Well, Brother McCoy, uh, but what about uh, whatever we eat, we got to pray for it. And it holy, just God didn't mean it. <laughs> first Peter chapter 4, I mean First Timothy 4, First Timothy 4. Now remember the, all the different things that you learned. Remember all the different things that you learned today. Now, this ain't for everybody. Everybody don't have the spirit of wisdom and a revelation. I know some folks just done rejected it already. But keep your sickness. Keep it. In an hour like this, you're going to need your immune system strong. 
They they got the, they got they got COVID nineteen and they got Delta. That junk kind of scared me. A Delta, I fly Delta all the time. I'm trying to think I'm gonna get a disease flying on the Delta variant, virant, or what do you call it? Variant Delta. And I'm trying to think. I said, there's some stuff I'm gonna get flying on the plane. <laughs> they just got junk. This Delta. You better have some immune. <laughs> Delta virus. They got folks scared like, these folks so scary right now, and it ain't nothing but control. Amen. You know what fear is? You cannot be afraid of nothing you don't believe in. They believe in COVID-19. That's why they're afraid of it. If they believed in God, they'd fear him. You believe what you fear. It's a faith. Now, 1 Timothy 4, and one of those of you on the live stream, and I know it's been a little long, lengthy service. I've been hitting all kind of stuff, all right? This is it. Ready? Real slow. Real slow. Now, remember all of the stuff that I taught you, Genesis 7 and 1, that before the Mosaic law, God created animals clean and unclean. Before the, before the flood, they were created clean and unclean. Y'all listening? Now pay attention. Pay attention. They were created clean and unclean, right? Before the, before the Noah flood, before the Mosaic law, they were created clean and unclean, right? Then I told you that thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And the law is the what? It's the truth, right? The law is the truth. Jesus was the word made flesh. He was the, by the law came by Moses, but, but, but grace and truth, grace and law came by who? You'll know the truth and the truth will make you. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Thy law is the the law is the, the law is the, but, but Genesis 7 and 1 meant that he created them clean and unclean before the flood, so that meant they were created clean and unclean before Mosaic, right? Amen. Right? So let me do this real slow now, real slow. He said, now the spirit speaketh expressively. Expressively means with an, with an expression, I'm, I'm not no doubt, this is solid. The Spirit speaks of expressing that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a what? Now watch this third verse. Be out of your way just a minute. Watch this third verse. Forbidding to marry. You know, they tell them folk now don't get married. You know, it's, some religious telling you won't be a monk, or, you know what I'm saying? And um, I remember them brothers when I first got married, all them brothers, man, I'm going to be like Paul, man. I ain't going to get married, man. I'm going to be like Paul. I told them brothers, ain't no sense in me lying. I'm going to be like Peter and get me a mother-in-law. <laughs> I ain't, I'm going to have, I got to have me a wife. Yeah, ain't no sense in me lying. It ain't no sense in me lying. i be like Paul. And every one of them brothers got married before I did. Cut all that line stuff. <laughs> he gonna be like Paul. No, you better be like Peter and get a mother-in-law. Listen to this. <laughs> he said the third verse, real slow, real slow. I want you to remember everything that from Genesis all the way from Leviticus, Psalms, all the way, all the way. Clean, unclean, Genesis, Leviticus, law. Psalms, the, the righteousness, the everlasting right, the law is the truth. Let me read it real slow. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the if you know the truth, you know what meets God created to be received. 
every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with what? Now watch this here, fifth verse. For it is what? Now tell me what the word sanctified me. Tell me what the word sanctified me. Set apart, holy, right? For it is sanctified by the what? The so the word puts a difference between the clean and the unclean. So if you know the truth, you know which meets God created to be received. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. But see, you, people strain it. They swallow camel and they strain it a gnat, but they can swallow camel. Plain and simple. If you know the truth, then you know which meets he created to be received. He told you what's me he created. That was before Moses ever came on the scene. That was before the, 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 the flood in, in the days of Noah. They were created clean and unclean. So when you know the truth, then you know what's me God created to be received. And then you're sanctified by the word and prayer. Just I pray over it. No, 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 no. You just can't pray over it. I'll go out there and grab one of them. Cock a spaniel turds and put it on a bun, put some mustard and relish on that baguette and go ahead on and bless it. Go ahead and bless it. Go on and bless that. Go on and bless that. See, you know better than that. Even your own conscience tells you certain things that ain't right. But see, here's where we go wrong. When everybody's doing wrong, then it make right seem wrong. So everybody's, everybody's doing it. You see? Everybody's doing it so it makes it look, to this day, to this day, if you recall about maybe eight, nine, ten years ago when, they, when they were, the, the Palestinians was bombing them Jewish buses, when they was, they was doing them kamikazes, y'all remember that? When they was blowing themselves up, right? Now Muslims and Jewish people, they know something. What they would do to keep the Muslims or them really them authentic Muslims, that they, 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 Muslims and, 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 and real Jewish people, they believe this law. What they would do was they would take a piece of pork and hang it on in the bus. And when them Muslims or them Muslims would come in on that bus and see that pork hanging in that bus, they wouldn't even get on the bus. A piece of pork kept them folk from getting bombed. It's the truth. A few years ago, that was the way that they was keeping them, them Palestinians, them, 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 them kamikaze folk off the bus. They would hang a big piece of pork in, on the bus, and they come on and see that they they would they don't come near it, they don't touch it. See. But we'll eat this stuff. We'll eat it. We'll go right down there, right in New Orleans, all on this Gulf Coast. You go in the restaurant. They got a little car sitting on on the on the table. Eat at your own risk. All of these all of these shellfish. Eat at your own risk. You understand what I mean? You understand what I mean? Uh, uh, a lot of this meat that they eating right now, the pork ain't USDA. Uh, 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 you know what I mean? You don't see that junk stamped on no pork. It's not it's not certified. And you sit up there eating that stuff. It's unclean. They got a disease called trichinium. I mean trichinosis. And it comes from a, 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 a trichinile worm. It's trichinosis, which causes, which causes heart disease, which causes strokes, which causes muscle spasms, which causes boils and cysts. A trichinile worm comes from pork. When you eat pork meat, you can cook it at certain temperatures, they'll still be alive. The larvae will still be alive. And these things are hatched in your body. They eat away. Now just think of a chicken eye worm starts, uh, starts eating at, at a blood vessel. Just eat at one blood vessel and eat a hole in that blood vessel and a blood vessel pop. It's called aneurysm. Or just say if them, them, them larvae get in the heart and go to eating, there's certain diseases that's caused by these things called heart disease. 
Or just say if your immune system is trying to get rid of them and they push it up out your body and you get all these boils and cysts. Bust them open, you call it pus. That ain't pus. That's larvae. These are things that there's parasites. The stuff that we eat in our body. Whoop our child is smoking cigarettes, you're gonna give them, you're gonna give them something worse than a cigarette. You're giving them hot dogs and stuff that's made from pork and un- all these unclean meats. And we eating this stuff and wonder why we ain't got no energy, wonder why we ain't got no strength, wonder why we we battling with lust and over 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 sex drives and stuff. You know, you eating all these aphrodisiac stuff that's making your soul abominable. You know, this unclean stuff, these scavengers coming up out the water. You see what I'm saying? And wonder why your flesh is so out of, out of hand. Wonder why you're sick. Wonder why you're having all these different problems. And people don't know this. This is for your health. And then when you get, when you get, when you get to have a stroke, watch. They got a book at the, at the, in the library. They got a book at the bookstore called Back to Eating, right? Back to E-D-E-N. Back to Eating. Right? Million, a million copy seller. Right? Folk buying the book, right? Watch. Not re- if, if you ever read the book, they buying a book derived from a book. If you, if you would read the book, you wouldn't have to buy that book. You listening to me? You wouldn't have to buy that book because here it tells you. Now watch. Watch. I'm going to show you where we are. I can tell you God said in flesh automatically rebels. The Bible said the carnal mind is an enmity against God. Just like I'm preaching right now, I'm preaching nothing but the word of God. All I've did with you is read, right? Read the word of God. Right? If you reject that, I don't receive that. I don't receive that. How come you don't receive that? But then watch, watch this here. Watch this. You don't receive that, right? But then you'll go to, you have a heart attack, you have a stroke, you have high blood pressure. And here's a man tell you, you got to stop eating pork. Here's a man tell you, you got to stop eating up shell food. Because it's caused you to break out and you have allergic reactions. Here's a man that tells you. But if I was to tell you God says it, then you reject it. But now you got to go to a doctor because you didn't want to deal with preventative sickness. So now you're sick. And somebody got to tell you something. Now, you willing to obey a man over what God say. Just think if you could be obedient to, 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 to God's word. Just think if you could walk in the word right now. There's all kind of stuff that's happening to us because we will not walk in the light of the word. You understand what I'm saying? That's why God is a merciful God. There's some stuff that we were raised. I was raised that way. So God had to come and cleanse me. God, God did things with my body. God, you understand, he helped me. I was raised, I didn't know no better. In time past, God winked on our ignorance, but now God's bringing men to repentance because he's sending them knowledge. It ain't no more time for milk and cookies. You're going to have to get this here. You don't need nothing going to make you sick. You don't need uh, 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 self-inflicted demons. You don't need self-inflicted sickness. You need, right now, you need to walk in the light of the word. Walk in the light of the word. When, 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 when Sister Courtney, now, and I teach this so strong, but I got so many church folk that you under bondage, that's law. But when I was a boy, those of you the older say, you didn't see women, see women uh, 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 with, 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 with cervical cancer and, uh, you know, all kind of, uh, you know, stuff like that. Women, did, women didn't have all them sicknesses and diseases like they got today. You understand? When them women would come, to, when them women would have babies, them old folk, them old folk wouldn't let you come out the house. They didn't let you come out the house. But the Bible said when a, when a male child is born, stay in the house 40 days. When a baby child is born, stay in there for, 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 for 60. You got it? 
And, 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 and that's all a part of and, and the, the baby breastfeeding and stuff like that. All a part of, 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 of that. those whole times is to keep the baby from outside a mule in them 60 days and 45 days. The male child's a lot stronger. You understand? But, you know, the, honor her as the weaker vessel. So they said so that baby needs that time not to be in public, not to be, you understand I me? Mean? So keep the child in. And in that process, the child is nursing, so it's sucking. It's bringing everything back in. The child is being nurtured giving that child time to, to get all the vitamins, you understand what I'm saying? You know, we, you, did, a cow never came to you and asked you to nurse his calf. So why would you take cow milk and nurse, nurse a baby? And then want to wait till the boogie get grown and call her a heifer. You see what I'm saying? You see? You know, so, 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 these are things that, like, like I, t- I used to teach all of this word. I took, I took cigarettes, like coffee. Like, T, I had to repent something yesterday. I had to repent about something and ask God to forgive me, you know, because God told me many things that just, like, like you, you have to be really, really careful because you can start eating things that you already have a knowledge. See, certain things like coffee, like tea, got caffeine in it, right? Do you know what caffeine is? Caffeine is almost like the same substance that you get out of cigarettes. Nicotine and caffeine works almost the same identical way. It's a stimulant. It's a stimulant. And then you take that caffeine. I used to teach all of this. I used to teach the health law. There was folk in my church, 80, 90 years old, shouting around the church, just strong. Them, them, them old men, that, uh, some of them didn't go on with people sitting up there at 70s and 80s years old, hammering them stakes in them tents. Them old men would sit up there, now you get boogers in their 20s, just huffing and puffing. They go get the machine. That's just too much jerking. Nothing, just weak man ain't got nothing. Nothing. Nothing, just huffing and puffing and no nothing, no, no. But then folk walked, and when I first started my church, they walked in the light of that word. They wasn't coming here walking in Brother McCoy. This wasn't my, they was walking, no bondage, no bondage, no bondage. They was walking in that word if you would diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You know, Deuteronomy 28, and, and, and you understand, and, and, and observe all of my, to do all my commandments and my statutes, which I command you this day. You know, I was set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all of these blessings. My church was this blessing. I mean, just people were blessed, and, you know, I, I never could do a building fund. All we could do is just ties and off, just like right now. We ain't no building fund. It ain't, it ain't, we're not sitting out in the middle of the street holding buckets and stuff like that with boots and stuff. Nothing. I'm, my boast is in the Lord, not Bill McCoy. Just trusting in the word, walking in the Sabbath, walking in, in, in paying your tithes, giving your offer. God will give you a miracle. God owns everything. Do you understand? You will, you will lend the many nations and not borrow. These are part of the blessings. Joshua 1 and 8. My son, he said, let not this law depart from thy mouth. But meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then shall you make your way to prosper, and then shall you have good success. This used to be a delight. David said, the blessed, is the blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoffer, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth his fruit in his season, whose leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. Amen. You understand? Amen. You got what I'm talking about? We delighted in it. Isaiah 58, 13, we, we, did, we, we call the Sabbath honorable, a delight. And doing so, it, it caused us to receive the heritage of Jacob. God told Jacob in the time of famine, I will bless you with plenty of corn and wine. Told Jacob, I will be with you. You understand what I mean? We walked in the word of God. We walked in the blessings. In the old, old, the old books of the Bible, I'm walking in the flesh. I couldn't keep these laws. I couldn't get these blessings. But through Christ, he come and died for my sins which were past, right? And then filled me with his spirit. A man that did no sin, neither was a guy found in his mouth, Right? I cannot do it. The spirit is willing, flesh is weak. There's no good thing that dwells within me that is within my flesh, right? 
But you understand? I can't do it. Oh, wretched man who, that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of, of this death? But thank God, through Christ, with my body I'll serve the law of sin, but with my mind will I serve the law of God. Amen. Is that what Paul said? You understand? You see what I'm saying? The law ain't been done away with. He now he no longer writing the laws on tables of stone. Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10. But I'm writing them on the fleshly tables of your heart. See, when you walk in this word, then you ain't got to be running to every doctor. And, and, and you, ain't got to, you understand? I'm not telling you I can't get sick, but I'm telling you if I walk in the word of God, many may be my affliction, but God going to deliver me out of what? God going to deliver me out of all of it. You got what I'm saying? God going to deliver me, and I'm, I'm going to walk in it. Somebody said, I don't see how you do eight nights. I don't see. I was ready to get in there and do on Friday night. You understand? I said, I'm going to give me some rest. And I said, I'll be ready. I'll be ready to roll. You understand what I mean? But, but nobody but God. If we walk and do what God say, well, what about the steroids they got in the beef? What about the steroids in the chicken? If it's clean in the eyes of God, whenever I, I eat it, God will make an angel take all the steroids out. Because, see, if I eat beef, they didn't eat beef every day. They ate beef maybe once a month when they went up to the temple to take a sacrifice. They, didn't, they were very tempered with the beef. They ate mostly fish. But the original man, the original man from the very beginning didn't eat no kind of meat. He ate herbs. He ate the herbs. He ate, the, he ate fruit and herbs. You got what I'm saying? And you said to get mad at me if you want to. I'm not trying to tell you don't eat no meat. But, uh, Elephants don't eat meat. Rhinoceros don't eat meat. Cows don't eat meat. Horses don't eat. But then we we govern our engines in our car by horse. <laughs> and none of them eat. They all eat vegetables. You see what I'm saying? So you don't, you, you, they said, well, you, you ain't got to eat like that. You got to possess this vessel in honor. He that defiles the temple of God, defi him will God destroy. Ain't no way in that Bible say cigarettes is wrong. Ain't no way in that Bible say cocaine or heroin is wrong. But we know that it defiles the temple of God. So we know that by all this drinking and unless you understand, it's going it's to defile the temple of God and him will God destroy. Right? But then I'm giving you point blank and telling you this here not only defiles your physical body, but it'll make your soul an abomination. And you got question with it because church folks said it's all right that the law has been done away with. Go out there and kill somebody if you want to. Just go out there and start stealing if you want to. And see if they let you and see if the law has been done away with. Go, go out there and just go rape somebody and just see if the law has been done away with. The laws are still intact. But see, man is getting so wicked till man is just, 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 just changing laws and changing times. But because man changes laws and changes times, it don't make it right. Because man says it's all right for a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman. It's all right to be same, uh, 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 transgender and all that kind of stuff, you know. It's all right. But it's all right maybe in the eyes of man. Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah were, were, were refuge cities. <coughs> Sodom and Gomorrah were refuge cities. They were cities that a, a homosexual or, or, or lesbian could run to for protection. But now, because they were protected from man, they weren't protected from God. That's an abomination. I'm going to bring death to it. You ain't seen nothing. Watch America. We know better. We know better. I don't care what they legalize in this nation. We know better. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not is beat with many stripes. God going to beat America. The wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation that forgets God. We done forgot God in America. We done forgot God in America. We have forgotten God in America. There's no rules. There's no regulations. There were certain laws down in the southern end. You commit adultery, you go to jail. Catch you with another man's wife, you go to jail. 
There's no laws. There's no, I mean, every man do that which is right in his eyes. Cause, and especially in the church because ain't no more teaching priests. Ain't nobody putting a difference between the clean and the unclean. What I'm trying to show you is the, is the wisdom of the word of God. You see, this is for your help. It's for your wisdom. It's for your knowledge. You set up there eating a bunch of stuff, eating a bunch of stuff that ain't right. You got what I'm saying? And then wonder why your, why your mind is all messed up. Wonder why your memory all messed up. See, stuff affect you. But it's health and all, life and all that find them, health and all your flesh. I appreciate you today, and I just hope and pray that one thing about it, I believe in clean eating. I believe in the commandments of God. Not nine, but ten. And I'm going to say this to you. Why in the world is Satan so bent on us like, like not keeping the Sabbath? Why, 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 why did he take the first one out? You know, thou shalt not have no other God. Why did he take the second one out? You know, make an engraving image, you know. Why, why would he take thou shalt not commit a dutch? Why would he take something like that out, you know? Why would he set up there in the fourth commandment, which is more wrote about the fourth commandment than any commandment in the Ten Commandments? Why would he take that one out and say we don't have to do that one no more? Preachers claim to be preaching holiness. Claim to be preaching holiness. The law is holy. The commandment is holy, just and good. Claim to you that we ain't got to keep this commandment. We ain't got to eat uh, like that. Wait, now, why in the world you going to call yourself preaching holy? The same law that you preach and talk about, a woman shouldn't they wear that to pertain to a man. The same law you preach and talk about, you shouldn't make no markings or cuttings on your body. The same word that you crying out, uh, the same book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy that you crying out about homosexuality and lesbianism is preaching about the same thing. But you going to sit up there? And then some of us, we listen to that stuff. We listen because your flesh don't want to be at church on no Sabbath. Your flesh don't want to give up all them unclean meats. But I tell you what, you want to walk with God when you find the truth, when you see the light, the interest of the word given life. When you see it, walk in it. Walk in it. It's your strength, wisdom, and understanding. It should be the stability of times. Some of y'all slipping, you want to eat that stuff, wonder why you're sick, wonder why you, you your immune. And then you ain't going to have no faith. Your faith, you, 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 you ain't going to have faith. Like, watch. People that, that, that know this word, know, obey this word, don't have no faith. So if you don't have faith, you cannot have, you cannot have a, a, a top and there's no bottom. So if you're going to be on the top, there's a bottom, right? If you're going to be on the bottom, there's a top, right? If you're going to be in heaven, there's a hell, right? So how in the world you think you just, you're not going to have faith? If you don't have faith, then the opposite of faith is fear. Faith works by love. Fear works by hate. So, so you don't obey God, so you walk in fear. You walk in fear. Perfect love cast out what? Faith works by what? So when you get perfected, whosoever keepeth my word, in him barely is the love of God perfected. So you don't want to keep his word, so now you're afraid. Now you're fearful now. And so that's what the devil feeding on is your fear. He feeding on your fear. He smells your fear. He smells your fear. God is drawn to your faith. Satan is drawn to your fears. He's coming to your fears. He's feeding on your fears. These people are so fearful. Look at them. They so fearful. Till he got them so afraid. They lining up. They done got one shot that don't last for six months. They lining up ready to get another one. Fear just got them. They don't know their fear is really controlling their minds. They think the mark of the beast is a mark. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that controls the mind. Because the mark for us is only in our forehead. It's what we think. He didn't put a mark in our hand, our flesh. Because flesh don't supposed to be doing nothing. You just see your hand, but when he marks them, he gonna mark them in their forehead and in their hands. So when they, what's in their mind, gonna make their flesh operate. It's gonna make their flesh operate. See, the mark of God is the Holy Ghost. 
Satan want to be in such parallel with God. People playing with this thing. You sit up here and want to come to church. You don't want to get this word. Who's ever keeping my word? In him barely is the love of God perfected. That word, I got to come because if I don't get that word, there's the best fear. If I don't want light, darkness is waiting to get in the door. If I don't want the truth, a lie is waiting to get in the door. If I don't want love, hate is waiting to get in the door. If I don't want faith, fear is trying to get in the door. So if I don't come to church and get faith, then fear is coming. If I don't, there's fear all on the board, bill, billboards. There's fear on your radio. There's fear on the internet. You understand what I mean? Fear everywhere. Fear on pamphlets. Fear on the back of your food boxes. Fear everywhere. So if I'm not reading the word of God, if I'm not getting that faith, I'm going to automatically start tending to fear. So you think I'm going to come to church and waste my time worrying about what you think about me? I'm here for one thing and one thing only. I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to survive. I preached a message under that tent in Jacksonville, Florida. Only the, only the strong shall survive. And all along as that devil, and more of that devil make you get to stay away from that word or make you cut that word and that don't take that, he's taking more, every time he does, he's taking more God away from you. And every time he take God away from you, you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Anything gets you down. You used to be so strong. You didn't, man, you're as strong as, as an ox physically and mentally, spiritually, man. Worry about that. You go on about your business. Go and get on your knees and cry. Stuff the husband did, the wife did. And you go in that room and get on your knees and go to cry. Man, pretty soon you go to church and folk wouldn't even know you had problems in your home. Folk didn't know that. Folk had to have discernment to know you was going through something in your house. Folk had to have discernment to even know you was dealing with a sickness. That's how strong you were. That's how, man, you had such a strength, but you were so determined. And you wasn't, you wasn't playing with the devil. You wasn't making no money. You wasn't setting up giving plays. We wasn't listening to a bunch of worldly stuff, looking at a bunch of porno and stuff on TV. I didn't even have television in my house. My kids didn't, we didn't, they, my kids didn't look at television unless they went over somebody else's house. My kids ate so clean that they didn't even eat sugar until they got, until they would go over somebody else's house. My children was raised on honey. They I had a, I had, a, had a little old screen. Back then they had that old, that old video, you know, that, 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 that uh, computer screen, looked like a, like a little TV. And I get that VCR and they look at Superbook and the, 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 the story of David. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what they looked at. That's how I raised them. Now, if they want to get big and grow on and be rebellious and do whatever they want to do and have a house full of pork chops, that's on them. I raised them the right way. I raised them the right way. They didn't, have, they didn't see no pork chops in my house. They didn't see no chitlins in my house. They didn't see none of that stuff in my house. You understand what I'm saying? And I stood for it then. And even to this day, I got a certain standard in my house. I live by that. And I mean, that's what helped me God. Lord spoke to me when I went through that trial. And God never let me go back to eating unclean, even in that trial. And the Lord spoke to me and he told me, if you went back to eating unclean, he said, your habits would have been real strong. He said that the stuff that was on you couldn't really grab you because your immune system was so strong. You understand what I mean? God spoke that to me. And see, people don't know this, man. You got, you know, we in an hour right now. I mean, you be looking at stuff, and you be watching Brother McCoy. You understand what I mean? It ain't like I don't go through stuff. It, like I, it ain't no aches or pains and stuff don't hit me. But, man, let me tell you something. Don't stop nothing. And, I mean, everybody ain't got, they ain't got the same measure of faith. And, and I'm, not, I'm not condemning the doctors or nothing like that. You understand what I mean? I mean, just, you know, that's where your faith is at. Sometimes you have to do what your faith tells you to do. But at this point in time in my life, you understand what I mean? I just believe God. I believe God, and I tell God every day, I told him something this morning, I said, though you slay me yet, will I trust you? You understand what I'm saying? And I don't put that on everybody. I don't put my, I don't put my, I don't put my faith on everybody because God gives to every man a measure of faith. But I'm telling you what's coming upon the face of this earth, something going to happen in America. Like I tell y'all, you have to hear me. It's all right. Something going to shut this nation down. They, I'm, I'm talking about going to shut it down. I'm talking about shutting it down where people ain't going to be running them doctors, going to be running them hospitals. It's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be messed up. 
go shut it down. Shut it down. And see, people in New Orleans, they kind of know what a shutdown is. I'm talking about shut down. I'm talking about where, where the, 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 the system is shut down. Where ain't no electricity, ain't no food, no water. A shut down. I'm talking about people that was hooked up to machines and stuff died. People that were hooked up to machines died. Because New Orleans had a shut down. Something going to happen in America going to shut this nation down. I don't know if it's for one day. I don't know if it's for a week. I don't know if it's a month. I don't know if it's for 10 years. But something in America going to shut this nation down. Mark what I tell you. It's going to be a death up in this country. Something going to die. It's going to send it. It's going to be like, you ain't seen nothing. It's going to be barbaric. It's going to be barbaric. Like, I saw, I was on, in New Orleans in, on, on Third Denunciation. And they just come out with that Thunderdome, with that Tina Turner, that uh, Mad Max movie. And the Lord spoke to me and told me, if y'all remember, said it's going to be a day. It's going to be just like Mad Max. Barbary. People going to be killing for food, for water, for gas. Watch and see. People think it's a joke. What I'm preaching right here, you going to, I got a woo man, Lord, just, I, I had a message. I don't know, I got so many messages I want to preach. I'm kind of like a woman in the closet trying to figure out what to put on and call somebody and tell them I ain't got nothing to wear. <laughs> I got so much to preach. I ain't lying. I, <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I'm telling you, man, God speaks to me. God be speaking to me. I ain't, I ain't never lost for no message. I mean, just, I don't know how preachers be talking about they got to study all week long to get a message. I wake up with a message. I go to bed with a message. I can go to use the bathroom and get a message. Amen. Flush all your problems away. <laughs> <laughs> Say amen. Get rid of the wasteful things. <laughs> Say amen. God just, just, it just, I mean, God speaks to me. Just constantly speak. I be, I be praying sometimes. I say, God, give me a word. He said, I, I told you, you are a word. I done sent you through so much hell. You ain't nothing but a word. But I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just teaching y'all this. I'm not, this, this ain't just coming, just teaching y'all this. This is what I believe. I believe this, so help me God. I really, really believe this. I, I, I really believe in what I'm preaching. I've lost family. I've lost friends. I've lost doors. People think I'm crazy. People won't let me come preach in their church because they, they think I'm going to preach this kind of stuff. Don't let me in. I thank God. I thank God every morning. I said, thank you for the houses you let me live in, the cars you let me drive, clothes you let me wear, the food you let me eat, the money you let me spend, and thank you for the doors you open, churches you give me, tents. They ain't got to open the door for me. I'll put a tent up in your backyard. I'm not lying. I ain't worried about no door. I ain't lying. I preach on the street. This is the God knows truth. This is in me. If God tell me to go to Walmart shopping mall and I ask him, if it's all right, give me a permit, I'll, be, I'll set them speakers right up over there. I ain't playing. This is in my soul. This ain't no joke. This in, I, I preached on the street for years. That brother Tyreek, that brother down, down in Jacksonville, Florida, that's, that was my ministry. That was my ministry. I preach. I'd be sitting on them streets. Man, I'd be preaching so hard on them streets. I'm talking about preaching hard, sweat, going everywhere, just preaching just like you see that young brother preaching. That's why it's so hard for me to pre preach in a pulpit because I ain't used to preaching up and uh, being up and preaching down. I'm used to being down and preaching straight up, preaching on them streets every day. I mean, I, I mean, every day I was on them streets preaching. And so what I'm saying is it's like, you know, going to them tents, that's my life. I, I enjoy preaching in a church, but church can become religious. Church can become, like, systematic. I mean, I like that outdoor, that I'm reaching, I'm, I'm just reaching them. They're walking in, they, they're coming in just fresh. You know what I'm talking about? I'm used to just, you know, you see, you get in church, folk get in the church, they get immune, and they get comfortable and all that kind of stuff, feel like they don't need it because they're coming into a building. You better come more into a building. You better come into God. I said, you better come into God. 
I love you today, and those of you on the live streaming, man, I know it's been a lengthy, man, lesson today, but we appreciate God for each and every one of you, and I love you with all my heart, my mind, my body, my soul, and, you know, like I said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. You know, by Paul said, I pray that God will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation into the knowledge and to the knowledge of him. And so everybody don't have this. No man know the Father but there's so much death in the church. Because people sitting around feel like they can do whatever they want to do. The laws are forever settled in the heaven. And the scriptures cannot be broken. I love you today. I'm not under bondage. It's not under bondage because I can't eat chitlins and hog malls. I tell you what's bondage is when you got to sit up there and shoot insulin. And I tell you what's bondage is when somebody got to wheel you in and you got to sit up there and take high blood, low blood, no blood. I tell you what's bondage is when you sit up there and you got to have a stroke and somebody got to help bathe you. I tell you what's, what's bondage when you got to be in and out that clinic and that hospital every day. That's bondage. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now, which would you rather have, this or that? I told a young man, I told a young man, I'm closing for those of you in the live stream, and I would be preaching, and he would, he'd tell me, he said, that's really, that's bondage, man. But McCoy, that's like, man, that's really restriction, man. I mean, I can't live like that. Finally, he got put in prison. And I went to see him. And it hurt me so bad because the crouch, the zipper part was down here. I mean, the, the, I mean, the crouch was down here. The zipper was still up here, but the crouch was down here, meaning that they could only walk like this. That's the kind of pants they wear in prison, at this particular prison. And so I was sitting there watching him, and it just hurt me so bad to see him. And I just I asked him, I said, now, let me ask you a question. Which bondage would you want, this or that? Uh, I didn't see it like that, Brother McCoy. But it's sad to don't see it and wait till it's over. He may never see the streets again in his life. So to you, this was bondage. To me, that was bondage. Those of you in the live stream, I love you today. God bless you. I hope you'll be tuning in on tomorrow. We're looking for God to do some crazy stuff. I believe it's going to be such an, I believe it's such an anointing, but I want, let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, those in the live stream and those sitting in the audience today, Lord, I pray a blessing upon the ear bone of the listener. Give them ears to hear and eyes to see. Father, touch them right now. Help them, Lord, to adhere to the word of God. Lord, you said they'll know the truth, and the truth will make them free, God. Some right now are going to clean out their icebox. They ain't got to listen to me, God. If they want to listen to man, let them get on the Internet and let them Google everything that I said, just about unclean meats and all of the different things that I tell them about, God. They'll find out, God, that the, it's, 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 it's the most infallible book ever written, and what was is and what is is, is to be. Father, let your blessings be upon them in Jesus' name. Strengthen them. Touch them within. Give them peace in their mind. Give them peace in their body. Give them peace in their soul. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. The way of God is perfect, and God don't make no mistake. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Those of you in the live stream, God bless you until tomorrow. Now listen. Saints and friends, we have been blessed once again by the word of God. And there is nothing more important than hearing the words of the Lord. My live stream family and friends, we have reached that point in the service where we all, no matter where we are, can sow into this great ministry. That's right, it's giving time. And it is as easy as ever for you to sow into this great move of God. There are three giving options available to you. The first giving option is through Cash App. Our Cash App name is dollar sign give T-I-Z. Once again, that is dollar sign, give, T-I-Z. The second giving option is through PayPal. The PayPal name is paypal.me forward slash give, T-I-Z. Once again, that is paypal.me forward slash give, T-I-Z. The third giving option is sending your seed gift through the mail. If you would like to mail your gift, send it to P.O. Box, 1267 Goldport, Mississippi 39502. Once again, that is P.O. Box 1267 Goldport, Mississippi 
39502. We of the TIZ Media team want to say thank you for all of your gifts, for all of your love, and for all of your support. We know that the Bible promises that when we give, the windows of heaven are open and a blessing follows. And it is my prayer that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Be sure to keep up with all things TIZ by visiting www.trumpetandzionfellowship.com. For those of you out there who would love to visit a physical location, we say you are welcome. And you can go right to that website and find the location of every Trumpet and Zion church. My live stream family, we have reached the end. And until we meet again, keep God first, pray without ceasing, and as always, may God bless you.